local talk about the issues that matter to you right here with me on Idaho's first radio station. And, you know, we're getting ready for the Democratic Convention. And as I said before to to everybody, batten down the hatches. It's time to, you know, get ready for more of the onslaught. And as we, <laughs> and I, I mean, what happens if you tell someone something is bad for you and they consume it anyway? That's really... Of course, the media is not going to tell you the truth that, you know, it's still a toss up election. It will be a toss up election. You know, all of a sudden the stock market has returned from one of the biggest crashes ever. All of a sudden the jobs are, are rolling in. And have you noticed all the prices that have gone down? Everything is wonderful now that we've gotten rid of Joe Biden and we've decided to um, have a wonderful, wonderful um, uh, festival, a little honeymoon with Kamala. Boy. <laughs> our times changing in America today. It's it, again, it's it's the the love affair with Kamala reminds me of well, I'll, I'll use my own personal life as well. But you know, cigarettes are bad for you. Cigarettes are bad for you, and yet people still smoke cigarettes. Cigarettes are bad, but people still smoke. Uh, we take a look at some other things too when we're taking a look at um, at food. Eating too much food is bad for you, but then there's. Kevin Miller eating way too much food. And these things happen, and this is the consequences. Are we going to have the uh, the the smokers convention, the Surgeon General's convention? I think they were going to put those warnings on food, and yet people still consume them. They still consume the delicious potato chips or the Twinkies or whatever else, and uh, they have a great time, and it's just plain wonderful and exciting. And I, I'm thinking to myself... Uh, how in the world can anybody vote for Kamala, Kamala, but maybe that's what we're seeing here. Again, a lot of time left in the ball game, a lot of time left. So we have to take a look at where we are, what we're doing and where we go from here. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, but, uh, I think our whole way of life is at stake and that's not hyperbole on an early, early, uh, Friday morning. Uh, some great stories on our website. Uh, you're going to love this one. It's official. Idaho is the nation's most boring state ever. I know that's tough to believe because we have a lot of exciting things going on here. Uh, we have uh, action, adventure, drama. But yes, Idaho is one of the most. No, it is. It's the most boring state in America. You can read uh, how we beat out the challenging top five on that on our website. Some other great stories as well when we're thinking about uh, the KIDO Talk Radio app, which will allow you access to our show, and you can get the podcast. You can all do all sorts of wonderful things. The app brought to you by our friend Greg Ferreira, Real Estate Rescue Idaho. If you didn't know that, when you log in, you could see it, and we have a lovely picture of the governor. Also, uh, based on our uh, conversations with Greg and others, Idaho Real Estate navigating the shift from boom to bust uh, another uh, interesting feedback, how at one time, and we still are considered the most overvalued real estate real estate uh, market in the country, and yet um, the prices are still pretty high, even though we had a large market drop. So those are things that are going on. I've been sa saving this story for, for quite some time. It's not a good story, but it's a story about life. And uh, let me share it with you now at 580-5436-580-KIDO. Having been uh, given the boot multiple times from many locations, and, you know, you shouldn't judge people on how many times they've been given the boot, although some people, when you get the boot, you're going, oh, I, I know why you didn't last, buddy. <clears throat> you didn't follow direction. No, oh, yeah, yeah, you knew more than the boss there, buddy. Well, you know, we've talked about into it. We've talked about the play, place in Nampa that laid people off. And is that, you know, um, did you ever see the movie Up in the Air or Gonzo Away with George Clooney and, and the woman and he and the woman are, you know, lovers. And then all of a sudden he finds out, uh-oh, uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh, she's married and has a family and he was just the side order of fries. Well, George Clooney in this movie he flew around the country and had the worst job ever. He would go in and fire people. And he had to pretend to be compassionate, had to pretend to care, had to pretend to do everything else. And this was during the recession. 
So it hit close to home. And those of you and the millennials, you weren't really, mm, you were coming into the workforce. But the Great Recession was was challenging. Having lived here in the last part of the Great Recession, you would drive down Fairview and there would be no help wanted signs. There would be nothing. People would be struggling to get a job. Very different from what we've seen in the last two or three years, where businesses, good, wholesome, hardworking, appealing businesses can't get people to work. So it always amazes me <clears throat> when somebody gets the boot. And the reason why that is, is, is there a right way to fire people? And by the way, you're welcome to join me at 580-5436-580-KIDO. I'm trying to avoid what happened during the Team Mazda commercial yesterday where I just started coughing rapidly. Those darn peaches, something gets stuck in your throat and then you're coughing, whatever. And there goes your, hey, this guy's a, the best ever. Uh, you go from the best ever to he can't even get through a spot without coughing. He's lucky to have a job. And that really has been the, the, the crux of a lot of employers. A, man, you're lucky to have a job. There's always this you know, weird power dynamic, power ratio between employer and employee and, and the like. Except, I guess, if you're like Winco and others where you're an employee-owned company. Anyway, I digress. Um, a company that was homegrown here in Idaho, a company that Jason Pierce, wondering if... Jason Pierce still listens to our program. I, I, I remember Jason Pierce, former mayor of Eagle, big conservative guy, nice guy. Bragged openly on the air that he listened to us in the shower. And you talk about a guy who's comfortable in his manhood. I'm all down with that. And we met the people that owned Pet IQ at Rembrandt's, owned by our friend CJ. And he's not just our friend. He's everybody's friend, CJ. And we're in there, and I'm looking disheveled, and this guy comes in, and then all of a sudden they talk about they're going to build this incredible facility. Pet IQ. What is that on? Eagle and, Eagle and Chinden, is it? Yeah, I think it's Eagle and Chinden. If it isn't, it's too early to, to, um, to be corrected. And I'm thinking the two, big, the, the two newest buildings that have been built on Eagle Road, T-Sheets, which became into it, and then they fired everybody. And I'm wondering if into it, actually, I mean, they just have this building there. Is it a ghost building? Is it a zombie building? Is anybody in the old into it building? And usually I'll either drive State Street or I'll drive Chinden. And in the Pet IQ building, I'm going, wow, they got a gym, man. They got all this thing. And this Pet IQ thing was instead of getting your prescriptions or your subscriptions or whatever from your doctor your uh, or your pharmacist, you would do it through them. And it was, it's like the Mark Cuban thing, uh, cost plus five or whatever. And you would have people from all over the country getting their prescriptions from Pet IQ, I believe. <clears throat> and again, if you do it through through your vet, uh, there's, a, there's a markup, of course. You know, that's how your local vet stays in business. Anyway, from the Idaho Statesman, uh, by the way, and I'm trying to think of the, the author, Angelo Palmero. Here's the headline um, when we're looking at this, and it's... It, doesn't really say many, many things. An Eagle company laid off hundreds of workers the night before announcing its $1.5 billion sale. See, I think, again, all great companies, and I'm not saying every company, but most great companies are entirely locally based, regardless of where you live. Here's the lead. Pet IQ laid off hundreds of employees less than a day before announcing it would be acquired by a private equity firm According to a veterinarian at the company, Dr. Elizabeth Dudas told the Idaho Statesman that the Eagle-based veterinary supply company notified affected employees at a three-minute Microsoft Teams call the evening of August 6th. The evening was followed, the meeting was followed by an email a few hours later delivered at 1047 by the company's legal department. So they didn't even, I guess they had to fire everybody because when private equity comes in, it's over because, and you see this with mergers and acquisitions and everything else. When everybody goes, hey, the new company is going to be great. That's why we are always telling you Kroger and Albertsons, not so fast, my friend, not so fast, my friend, because you're going to have less choices, less choices for employees and less choices when it comes to food costs. And, you know, that what, well, it's like the gas stations. Once they have you, they have you. 
quote, despite our best efforts, the ongoing challenges within the labor market and the increasing operating costs have made it clear that the wellness center model is no longer sustainable, said the email which Dumas Dudas shared with the statesman. So we've made the difficult decision to exit the wellness center model, which means closing our remaining remaining wellness center locations. Dudas estimated the roughly 250 to 300 employees were laid off. Most are veterinarians and support staff, she said. So you get rid of the wellness people. You do this in a three-minute micro... Is there a worse way to communicate than Microsoft Teams? I hate that thing. Hey, get on the Teams. I don't want to get on the Teams. I'd rather have a faceless phone call. I digress. And then in an email, boom. How about that? Boom, you're gone. And then, coincidentally enough, the company announced that it planned to leave the stock market and sell to private equity for $1.5 billion in cash. And let's see. It's an investor consumer health and wellness business called the Banks Group. Amazing. So you've got 130 pet IQ centers to close across the country. They have wellness centers in 39 states around the country. So this isn't just the people here in our area, but it's everywhere. Huh. Nine veterinary clinics in the Treasure Valley, according to the company store locator, but only one, the Meridian location, is a wellness center affected by the layoffs. How about that, though? So you're a doctor. You go in and you do all these things, and the next day you get the boot. Let's see. They were trading at 31 bucks a share. Hmm. Man. Amazing. The company was founded in 2010 by CEO and Chairman Cord Christensen, who was born and raised in Idaho. The company quickly became, grew from a single office room in Eagle to a company with uh, net sales of over a billion dollars and employees across the nation. Dang. I hate to see that happening. And, you know, who knows what they're going to do with that big thing in, in Meridian or Eagle. You know, that's their worldwide headquarters. And I remember... Speaking with the folks from Pet IQ, and they said, you know, we could have built anywhere else, but we are from Idaho, of Idaho, and we're going to keep it in Idaho. And maybe that's happened, what happens when you go on the stock market or private equity or what have you, but we've lost another business, just like we lost T-Sheets, man. And I'm sorry for those people that lost their jobs. Now, if you're a veterinarian, you should be able to pick up and get a gig somewhere. A vet assistant, you should be able to pick up and get a gig somewhere, but... When people talk about the economy, we're starting to hear these Greg Ferrero uh-ohs where, you know, we've got the uh-oh and another company closing. Uh-oh, another company doing this. Uh, I don't know about you. I do know about you. That seems to be very alarming. And it's not as if the prices are going down, as we talked about in our story to open the segment about home prices. It's not as if our, uh, you know, everything is getting more affordable. In fact, it's the exact opposite. And you have people in the restaurant business, you have people in in the grocery store business that are doing their very best not to continue to pass along the cost to the consumer because, to quote our old friend Dave Ramsey, sooner or later, we're all going to be back to rice and beans, beans and rice, rice and beans, beans and rice. And for me, I need the low-sodium beans and rice for a lot of reasons called hypertension. However... Uh, you, you think about this and, you know, boom, all of a sudden, this is big news. And, and look, as the unofficial media critic of the entire Treasure Valley, I, this is a good story. Um, and I know, you know, we'll get the old excuses. Well, we we don't have enough resources, but this is good business news. I'm sure the I know Business Journal has that story as well. But think about that. All of a sudden, OK, so you're you you're getting ready. Maybe you got lucky and you took your summer vacation. Or you're getting ready to take your summer vacation and your kids are getting ready to go back to school and la, 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 everything's great. And they gut you. And it's no, here's two weeks. Maybe everybody got severance packages. I don't know. Here's two weeks. No, boom. Get on a Teams call. A memo to everyone. Don't get on a Teams call. It's a trap. And then the corporate emails. Whatever happened to humanity in America today? Sorry, Kevin Miller. We couldn't fly George Clooney across the country to do this. 
Well, uh, again, it shows you you got to look out for yourself. You have to look out for yourself. You know that old Bill O'Reilly line, who's looking out for you? We'd like to think that we're looking out for you. But in reality, who is looking out for you? Our phone numbers, 580-5436, 580-KIDO. Uh, maybe you'd like to share uh, your stories of getting the boot. Uh, if not, I'll share with you one of mine real quick. Uh, my, one, one of the, the most challenging getting the boot stories. <clears throat> I've got three of them. Uh, I'd love to hear from you, but if not, it's Kevin Miller gets the boot. As we roll closer and closer, we're a week away from our 15th year here, uh, having made it here 15 years. Will we make it? Uh, I'm not getting on that team's call, though. Kevin Miller, KIDO Talk Radio. Incredible collegiate athlete. All you have to do is go to our website, get the podcast section. Kevin at KIDOTalkRadio.com is my email, but it's Kevin Miller's show and that Riley Gaines interview. So this is interesting. Here we have um, Merrick Garland visiting Idaho. The almighty attorney general. We'll tell you what he said in a minute. First, Polly, good morning. You're on KIDO Talk Radio. Hello, Polly. Good morning, Kevin. Top of the morning to you. And to you. Excuse me. Yeah, you touched on a couple of things to change the topic away from politics. And I, I think the time to be able to breathe is right now. So I'm not going to talk about politics. But you, you can't get away from it. You know, good morning to all the Treasure Valleyites. You know, it's good to be with you guys. I love living in the valley here. There's a diverse amount of population here that um, I think we can all agree upon that we, we kind of help each other. There's a sense of community here in the Treasure Valley, and that's one of the main reasons why I've stayed. Um, you know, this this Kroger-Albertsons thing, the only winners are going to be maybe some some of the shareholders of the two companies, but the CEOs of both companies are going to rake it in big time. And when it comes time to the prices, it's getting ever so close to a monopoly that we can't get away from it, you know? And, and that's, that's the trouble. You can see it coming down the track, but you, you're tied to the track like Snidely Whiplash he's to strap Nell to. And, um, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but that's the, that's the kind of the way we, we decide that people that are successful are the ones that are on top and everybody else in the middle or on the bottom has to take it in the shorts. And it's, it's unfortunate because that's not the way it was. We used to have jobs that we would covet and want to keep because we had pensions with that company and also maybe Social Security at the end of our working um, time and and so you had basically two two different ways to re to retire with money and, and now we're ever so close to not having any social security and there's companies aren't doing retirement they've X that out they decided they can use the money themselves better than we can so we no longer have it and it's it's disheartening because there's no incentive to want to stay on a job and do a good job. You see a lot of half arse workers that uh, you you want to say something to them because they're they're dragging the whole the whole crew down. And and like like you said, the people that are in charge of uh, the supervisors of those people that are lollygaggers or gold breakers. You know, you you can't say anything to the to the worker. You got to say something to the employee or employer rather. And when you do, then you run risk of being a snitch. And then and then you get on the outs, and and then you're not even in, in part of your own job. So where do you go? You know, if you want to if you want to do something for your fellow coworker, just work as hard as you can at your job, and give them the example that they need to look for. Because I've worked with with young people at that job that I have now, they don't have a clue. They have no work ethic. They just don't. They've never been taught it by their parents, but their parents are working and they don't have time to be able to raise their kids. They hand them a phone and say, here, this is life now. This is what you have to do to be a success in life. 
And it's it's really, I don't know, that's not the way I was raised. I was raised so close to the family unit that, you know, some things that I didn't do that I should have done, I did on my own. And, you know, I'm paying the price for it now. I have to work at the age I am, which is not complaining, but, you know, it's a decision I made as a young man. And we we all have we all have to pay for our indecision and decisions as well. And now I'm actually happy with still working because I'm I'm not the rocking chair type of person. I like to be out. I think I, like I would be. Things. I, like I to think be I would like that. Things for other people, yeah. And it's, it's it doesn't pay much. It's it's way less than than what people are getting paid now. And I'm okay with that. You know, I can. I can make do. I can get a food box from a church every now and then if I need to, you know, for, for a little bit of subsistence. And, you know, the rest of the callers that are listening to this, you know, there is hope. If, if you still are able to vote, you're still a valid voter, you have no felonies on your record, do not vote Democrat. It's a trick. Oh, my. Every, everything, everything that this woman went after and and raised her hand for in 2019 she's she's doing a flip-flop on every single thing and she's she's if she does get voted into office she's going to do a flip-flop on every single thing and go back to what she said in 2019 and before you know it it's not going to be it's, it's going to be a marxist government is what it is and it, well we're already there well yeah we don't have quite the the police force, that's the governmental police force other than the FBI that will come after us. You know, I'm not trying to be paranoid. It's just it's the way that they work. We'll have gulags that will be here's building a, Here's a question for you. Uh, let's, you want to put some people on the spot or you want to be nice, Polly, this morning? I, I don't want to be nice. I mean, when it comes when it comes to talking about our survival, you can't be. Well, here's a question I have for you. Why do the Democrats come to Idaho, but the Republicans they don't? Want, because they, call, they want to conquest it. It, it has nothing. It has nothing to do. With, has nothing to do with like to being in nature and such, and going hiking. They they want to have a conquest. It's something that they can say that is theirs, and then they want to flip it and turn whatever the LDS people have built up over the last century and 20 years. They, they want to destroy it. They want to get rid of it. And they want to claim it. And, and right. there you have it. I'm not LDS. I'm not pro-LDS, and I'm not against LDS. I never have been. They were the nicest people that I've met basically in my life up to that point. And that's why I stayed. It wasn't because I could go see the Sawtooth from Redfish Lake. That was a beautiful sight. But there's evil that works in, in the hearts of men. And when you decide that you're going to be doing something for the rest of your life, as long as that is, and you want to do it for the right and, and not, not for something that's evil and di dishonest and unforgiving and... and and with a finger being pointed, index finger being pointed in your chest repeatedly until you do what they say. I don't want that in my life. I'll do whatever I can to keep that from happening. Hmm. We, uh, we appreciate that, Polly. You have a great day. You too. All right, Paulie, thank you very much for the call. Don't forget our friends at Beacon Plumbing. They're hardworking. They're working for you. Whether it's a drain, whether it's a toilet, whether it's a water heater, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Beacon Plumbing is there for you. And I know you're the master of your universe until that leak happens, and then it's a giant Greg Ferreira, uh-oh. Don't have a Greg Ferreira, uh-oh. Call Beacon Plumbing and get that problem done Stop freaking, call Beacon, and get back to enjoying your life or working hard so you can enjoy your life. Let's get you to work safely and on time. Our great friend, site is, well, Idaho is America's most boring state. Welcome, everybody, and prepare to be bored by Idaho's talk show. <laughs>
Uh, if you're just tuning in, we were talking a little bit about uh, getting the boot. Uh, sadly, in relation to the pet IQ people and other people that are now suddenly getting fired, not only in Idaho, but across the country. And, you know, but yet we hear from the Democrats that everything is great. And we're going to get to them in a minute. But uh, I'd love to get your stories about, you know, getting fired. And in broadcasting, it's it's not the real world, as our friend Maury Taylor, uh, former CEO of Titan International, said uh, politics in the in and broadcasting or radio is is not the real world. So here we are. I mean, you, you talk about, uh, you know, some of the – and I guess we can laugh about it now, some of the most, you know, wonderful ways of getting fired. I can remember uh, one time getting fired by a guy, and then he let me work there until I found another job. And then when I found the other job, he said, you sure you want to leave? And I'm going, well, it doubles my pay, and you just fired me. Yeah, but you could stay. Uh, okay. Um, I'm trying to think of some other ones. One, I was fired by a guy that had literally blue skin. Yeah, he walked around with an unlit cigar. He was a bully. And his whole philosophy is when he came into a place was to fire everybody and to bring in his own team. And dude had blue skin because he had a back fusion that went bad. And he talked in a grandly voice, nasally. He never had a chance. You're right, sir. I was happy to get out of that one. But uh, there is no really good way of, of giving people the boot. But now today it's on Teams. At least the story, according to the story in the Idaho Statesman where, you know, you're sitting there and, hey, everybody, there's a massive Teams call. You're all fired. And then there's a follow-up email. Now, if you're fired, do you really get your email? And I don't want to make light of it, but to me it just seems to be very, very insensitive. And then Pet IQ, a homegrown company, gets to be sold for $1.5 billion. Yeah. Oh, the humanity, like when the stock market uh, cheers when the unemployment level goes up or something of that nature, because you need to be more efficient. One of the great stories that I highly recommend, it's called Other People's Money uh, with Danny DeVito. And it really shows you the difference between a local community-oriented business that has that covenant with the community. And then when you have the shareholders and the stock market and the flea market and everything else. Oh, Kevin, everybody's invested in the stock market. You're a hypocrite. I'm not invested in the stock market. I'm invested in you. I'll, I'll, Dave Petzo knows that. Ron Grant knows that. Everybody knows that. Um, I sit back and I, I'm, I'm invested in the people. Well, you're going to be working for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I am going to be working forever. So uh, better that than rely on other people. Um, that and you ever just get something that gets in your crawl? So... Yesterday, I guess Micron opened up their big uh, kids center. It's a pretty big deal. It's going to allow, I think, what the employees of Micron and maybe other people to have a place to put their kids. And it's like a kids recreation center. And it's great and it's wonderful and it's exciting. And, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those good news stories that you get in Idaho. You don't get a lot of in-depth investigative reporting but you do get a lot of uh, press release journalism. And let's face it, unless you've been here a while, unless you choose to live here, which means you're not going to make an exorbitant a lot of money, but you're going to live in one of the best places ever. So Micron yesterday opened up their early learning center, focusing in on STEM. And I know some people are going to go, he's against Micron. Doesn't he know that's bringing in billions of dollars? Yeah, it is bringing in billions of dollars that we're paying for. And you ask anybody who's been associated with Micron that they have their own unique ways of doing things, just like every major corporation. In fact, Micron has been at the cusp of success and at the, uh, you know, at the edge of failure many times. We can remember when China tried to buy Micron and the death of Steve Appleton, I believe, in Boise on that plane. The guy that kept Micron and the roots of Micron attached locally. Now, Micron, you've got the folks, I believe they, maybe they live in Boise, but I believe they fly in. And I really don't know how you can fly into a place and, uh, you know, all of a sudden that's your corporate headquarters, but you live somewhere else. 
But like I said, it's the good news journalism. And you're going to say to yourself, well, Kevin, uh, what, what's so wrong with this? Why, why is it so bad? I will say this. I think that it's great and it's wonderful and you, you want to do these things. But there was a comment by Lauren McLean. And you know something? I have been blessed to be a conservative on the radio for a few years now. And when you're a conservative, you have to stand for principle. And when you're a conservative, you say things that get you in trouble. You say things that say, you know, you're a little controversial. And we don't want to deal with controversy. How in the world can anybody not want to be a part of this great election cycle that's coming? Anyway, we all have choices. We're not for everyone. However, I go back to the comments. So you have the governor there. And the governor, diplomatic guy, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then, and I'm trying to find the clip, but I can't find it, <laughs> coincidentally enough. However, at 580-5436, 580-KIDO, the comments of Lauren McLean. And Lauren McLean bragging that Joe Biden brought the Chips and Salsa Act to Boise. She had to make it partisan. She had to make it that Joe Biden is our daddy. She didn't mention that the entire congressional delegation voted against the Boise boondoggle. And it's great that Micron's new early learning center focuses on STEM, but what about the trades? What about the real people? And by the way, we all know, would Micron be doing this if Joe Biden didn't fit the bill? foot the bill if micron wouldn't be doing this if the state didn't give them a whale of a deal oh kevin look at all the economic development really sure what's the impact on the air and i understand dude there are many people that have their jobs there and kevin you're on thin ice welcome to the talk radio club i get it i understand it at 580-5436 580-KIDO but the issue here, my friend, brother, sister, is we have a mayor that is overly partisan and continues to bring partisanship in this. Is she looking for a gig with uh, the Harris administration, working for Peter Buttigieg? You don't need to bring up Joe Biden. Let's go to Glenn in Napa with Kevin Miller on KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning, Glenn. Good morning, Kevin. Um, you want stories about being fired, huh? I'd like a I'd like a good story. Yes. What do you got? Um, I've been fired. I've been fired one time back in 2016. Um, I was working in Wyoming, and this is back when the war on coal was going on. And uh, Wyoming is really big in the energy sector with coal, gas, and oil. And uh, several of the coal mines out there had filed for bankruptcy. I was working for a plumbing company, and uh, every year they were building a new school. Well, once the layoffs happened at the uh, coal mines, they canceled the next school project. So the plumbing company I was working for didn't have enough work for everybody. And I knew the fix was in. I had only been in Wyoming three years. I wasn't one of the local guys, so I knew I was probably going to get the boot. And, uh, so I'm on the job side, I'm working, my boss shows up and he's like, where are your tools? I said, well, some are here, some are in my truck. And he says, well, get all your tools. Let's go to your truck. So I gather up my tools. I go to the truck and he says, give me the keys. So I give him the keys. He's like, get in. I'm like, what's going on? He's like, well, your services aren't needed anymore. Drove me to my house and unloaded all of my tools off the truck and left me there. No, thank you for your service. Nothing of, the, of that nature? Nope. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Now, I knew it was coming, and I actually had set up some job interviews in Idaho on a Friday. We were working four days a week, and that was a Wednesday, so I'm not sure if... I mean, I knew it was coming, and I'd had job interviews set up, so I was going to come to 
Idaho to look for a job. So I don't know if uh, one of my prospective employers called to check references or not. I had put in there, please don't call my employer, but you never know. But yeah, it was, even though I know it was coming, it was still pretty rough that it was just like, here you go, pack up your stuff, you're done. What tipped you off? If you had to give somebody a tip on, hey man, here comes the boot, what would it, what would it be? Um, I just saw the way that the economic conditions were in that town, it was all based on coal and oil. The coal mines had filed for bankruptcy. They had laid people off. And, uh, yeah, I just knew there wasn't going to be work. That's what tipped me off, just looking at everything else around. So, What's that Wyoming like? That seems pretty desolate to me. Oh, I love Wyoming. Uh, I'm not a people person. There is uh, more uh, antelope than people. And, uh, um, I would still live there. I love it. Um, it just feels like freedom. It's like Idaho, but with less traffic. Yeah, but there's like, I think I've driven through Wyoming. It just seems like just still a bunch of rocks. Um, Southern Wyoming is very rocky and desolate. You get, uh, Yellowstone and around the mountains there. Um, there's a lot of trees, mountains, things like that, but a lot of it is just rolling hills, rolling plains, um, and grass. It's where the deer and the antelope play. All right, Glenn. Well, I appreciate it, brother. What do you make of this pet IQ people getting the booth, though? Here, get on the teams. Here you go. It's, yeah, it's, it's just brutal. You know, there's no... I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. There's just no common courtesy anymore. No warning. No two weeks, no severance package, anything like that. In a lot of places, if you go to give two weeks, they get rid of you right away. Um, it just seems like the nor social norms of businesses are getting turned upside down. And, you know, you were talking about it earlier. Pension plans are gone. There's really nothing that has a pension plan unless you're a government job. Um, at least with the 401k system, you can put money in it. Your employer, if they're a good employer, will contribute. And then when you go to another employer, you can move that money into the new 401k system. And at least you can take that with you if you go from job to job. And uh, this is kind of off topic, but it isn't. Um, you were talking about Micron and the money that they were getting. There is no government money. It's all taxpayer money. It's all money that we've paid in taxes. And the government is really good at spending our money and giving it away. And, uh, you know, there is no free handout. There's no free money. It all comes from somewhere, and it's usually us. Right. So, and then you got the mayor spiking the football. Yep. Yeah, and you have this. Oh, man. I know that they haven't announced the plan yet, but Kamala, or should I say Kamula, is talking about price controls on groceries and things like that. And we saw how that works in Venezuela. We saw how that worked during the Soviet Union. Um, price controls don't work. You look at price controls at New York City for rent control. It doesn't help. It makes it worse. It uh, doesn't let supply and demand work like it should. And, you know, she's talking about $25,000 housing assistance to buy a new home. All that's going to do is that's going to push the prices of the houses up $25,000. Yeah, but the I, and then how are you going to pay for it? How are you going to pay for it? Well, it's taking other people's money. They're taking our well, money and I, giving it back to us and saying, hey, look what I did. I'm giving you your money back. Glenn, great point. We appreciate it. You have a great weekend, sir. Just shut up and eat your grasshoppers. My man, take care. <laughs> Don't forget our friend Sean Hannity, 881, right after Clay and Buck on KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning. KIDO Talk Radio. 
Your morning espresso starts right here. It's the Sean Hannity Morning Minute. He co-sponsored this Medicare for All bill, universal health care bill with Bernie Sanders in the U.S. Senate. And now our campaign says we don't know because she doesn't talk to anybody. And now they say, well, no, no, she doesn't support that anymore. He also called for an elimination of all private health insurance. Wow. We know that she has been bragging about Bidenomics. We know she lied about inflation and it's only transitory. He was play- praising Bidenomics up until recently and played that on TV last night. We played it on this radio show. Her own words and Tim Walz's own words are devastating to them if the American people only, only know about it. And this is now becoming a big problem. The Sean Hannity Show, from coast to coast, later today. Hey, protect your home and family. Now, it's a responsibility you cannot take lightly. But starting with deadly force, that should not be your first option, especially given the serious mental, financial, legal consequences that can very well follow. You might want to look at non-lethal force. That's where Burner comes in. It's a non-lethal pistol launcher designed by a group of common sense gun owners, and it's used for everyday Americans concerned about their personal safety and security. Now, the Burner pistol launcher is equipped with powerful deterrents like tear gas and kinetic rounds. So the Burner launcher can incapacitate an attacker for up to 40 minutes. Now, that's enough time to ensure your family's safety. The Burner launcher is legal in all 50 states. You can ship directly to your door. It's time to join the growing movement. And they always put safety first. Go to their website, byrna.com slash Hannity. You'll get 10% off. Watch their videos, byrna.com slash Hannity, 10% off. And make the smart choice for you and your family and your safety today. Kevin Miller in the morning, KIDO Talk Radio. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget Lars Larson right after Sean Hannity today at 4. As we move along here, coming up next, are Democrats plotting a national takeover of Idaho? We've got the proof. We'll share it with you next. Plus, Jared Halpern will join us from Fox News with the latest from Washington, D.C. Kevin Miller, KIDO Talk Radio. Road. He's going to be in Salt Lake with Glenn Beck September 7th. Tell me that one's not going to be sold out. By the way, Glenn Beck today at 7 on KIDO Talk Radio. Coming up, though, uh, we have Merrick Garland, the attorney general in town, speaking with our attorney general, or not our attorney general. He's speaking with the U.S. attorney, Josh Hurd. He also met with a bunch of local people. Uh, He met with local law enforcement. Did he meet with Raul Labrador? Did he meet with uh, our attorney general? I know. I know we're not supposed to do this. It's, Kevin, it is all about press release journalism. Get the press release and be happy that Garland is here. Now, again, this is close to home because we love and support law enforcement. And it is always good when the Attorney General gets here, but the Solicitor General, Elizabeth Prig, Prologger, Prologger, Prelogger, she's here, a Boise native, which is pretty huge. Um, was here a couple of days ago, I guess on Monday or Tuesday. And it's a big deal. However, did they talk to Sheriff Donahue about the border? They talked to Sheriff Clifford about the fentanyl issue. And how many times are we going to continue on talking about the, the fentanyl issue? Are we actually going to solve the fentanyl issue? Are we going to say it's time to close the border? It's time to take back our streets it's time to do the right thing we'll talk about it next we're just getting started kevin miller in the morning on idaho's talk station kido talk radio and beacon plumbing they say stop freaking call beacon today we love our friends at beacon plumbing beaconplumbing.net as we move along, KIDO Talk Radio, you're home for Fox News on the radio. Let's go to Jared Halpern, who joins us now. Jared, good morning. Good morning. How are you, Kevin? Not bad. Um, are your bags packed? I figured you would, uh, you know, have a couple days off before you you go in. Are, are you are going in right uh, next week? I am. No, I'll, I'm leaving for Chicago uh, tomorrow. So, yep, yeah, bags are uh, are packed. I'm excited to have another convention week. They're always a lot of fun, and this one's going to be. I think fascinating to kind of see the dynamics, right? Because this was going to be the uh, Joe Biden convention. It is now the Kamala Harris uh, convention. 
Uh, we'll hear from President Biden early Monday night. It, it, the opening night is when he's expected to speak. And, um, and then uh, it's kind of like passing of the baton, right? I don't, I don't think he plays a, a real prominent role beyond that, that kind of introductory speech early in the week. The, the rest of it is really going to be uh, the vice president's um, uh, convention um, and uh, kind of the national uh, rollout here of her campaign and her running mate, Tim Walls. Um, she is delivering, the vice president is her first major uh, policy speech today. She'll be in Raleigh, North Carolina, um, uh, giving an economic speech about some of her uh, proposals to bring down uh, costs. And so we'll see. And she's also hitting the road. While, while that convention is going on um, in Chicago, her and Walls are, are kind of hitting some of those battleground states. So uh, this is a, a kind of all hands on deck kind of approach here um, in a very condensed campaign for the vice president. Boy, that um, that is fascinating. I can't remember a last time that a candidate was on the road during their own convention. Yeah, I mean, I think they're trying to, to flank out, um, you know, keep uh, the attention on. Um, I don't think that they're going to do events that, that kind of run over one another. I don't think you're going to see her in prime time, right? She'll want the attention in Chicago when they're putting on their, their production, but um, you know, why not get out there, I suppose, and kind of road trip it over to, to Chicago, kind of the old school way, uh, the old whistle stop tours, I guess, um, up a little bit more higher tech this time around. But uh, you know, it's interesting just to kind of see um, how this campaign is taking shape. It certainly um, is a lot more active than president Biden's was, you know, one of the criticisms was that he wasn't out there as much as some Democrats wanted him to be. Obviously he has a full-time job as president, but um, she is really trying, I think, to, to set up a, a contrast, not so much between her and Biden, but certainly uh, between her and Trump as well. Right? You now Trump put pressure on her for the news conference thing. He did a, a news conference, a news event yesterday, had another event, um, he'll be on the road. Uh, the, the Senator, uh, J.D. Vance will be on the road during, uh, the Chicago convention. So, uh, listen, this is kind of the start as we approach Labor Day of kind of that, that final lap of the campaign. And it's one that most people are now paying attention to. And so, um, it is a very different campaign than where we started. We are seeing that, uh, in polling. I'll be interested to see kind of what that polling looks like maybe after, uh, the convention, you would expect Harris to kind of ride that honeymoon, ride that that wave of excitement through Chicago. Maybe you see uh, both campaigns kind of settle back down to maybe a more normal setting, and, and that may give us a better indication of kind of where uh, where she has made up ground um, from. from Our great friend Jared Halpern joining us with some great content here on KIDO Talk Radio. Um I don't know, Jared, the older I get, the more soft I get, the more nostalgic I get. And, and you got to wonder about President Biden. And again, you manage these huge egos because you cover them. But here he is. Mm. This was supposed to be the, 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 the nightcap, the crowning achievement. And they give him Monday as opposed to Tuesday. Yeah. Or, oh, I, you know, a Monday is really yeah. for the openers. Uh, yeah. And we're also it's also before we're going to hear from the other uh, the, the other from presidents and i guess he's not a former president but you know we're going to hear later in the week from uh clinton uh hope they have a lot of time thought it out for him and later in the week from yeah. uh former president obama as well who can give a speech right and so um listen i think part of that too is just kind of laying the groundwork for you know it gives him a day to kind of talk about what his legacy is his accomplishments what he's proud of achieving hand in hand with his vice president and then uh, the rest of the week is much more forward looking, right? Kind of laying out the road ahead, the path ahead. Um, and, and it's a much more traditional rollout, right? No, not a single Republican former president or former nominee spoke la uh, last month in, in um, Milwaukee, right? There, there were no, like George W. Bush wasn't there. Romney wasn't there. Uh, there, there were no formers in, in kind of the way that we think about party elders and party leaders. The Democrats, uh, are going to, to bring out kind of the, the generation before, um, which is usually what you see at these conventions, right? You're going to see uh, Hillary Clinton. You're going to see Bill Clinton. You're going to see Barack Obama. Um, so I think part of that, too, is, is part of that unification process, kind of that passing the torch process here that Democrats are trying to, to achieve with this convention. Uh, again, I go back to that, boy. That's got to be rough to be. I mean, you're, you're, you're as you point out, Jared, 
you, you know, the former presidents are going after you. It's just as if they want to get yeah. Joe out of the way. Uh, you know, that's going to be the, the criticism. Uh, let's see what that speech looks like. Perhaps it is designed to kind of set everything up for the rest of the week. But you're right. Monday night is traditionally not the most prominent of nights for for the convention. And that's where, where we expect to hear from President Biden. Now, we'll see if he pops in um, later in the week. But there's no indication of that thus far. Jared, anything else that we should um, keep our eye on next week? I really appreciate the how yeah, no, important the, the speaker just, selection uh, is. I, I, yeah, I think that's what I'm interested in, right? We don't know a lot about what the other uh, speakers are going to look like, what the other themes are going to be. Um, and obviously, I think the other thing we're going to be keeping an eye on is maybe what some of those protests look like. We know that there are groups that are um, uh, promising pretty large demonstrations as it relates to the war in Gaza. Uh, how much of an impact, if at all, does that have? I'll be keeping an eye on that as well next week. Jared, uh, good luck. I know you'll be living it. Yeah, that's always fun. I appreciate it. We'll talk, uh, we'll talk from there. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jared. All right. Yep. Jared Halper joining us. Outstanding coverage, as always, from Fox News Radio right here on KIDO Talk Radio. So, again, just to go in depth for a moment, you ever been slighted? You ever been slighted? You know, I'm one of those people that someone looks at you the wrong way and I go, oh, wow, I'm slighted. Ah. And you could actually build a case against them. Now, again, we don't like Joe Biden. As Donald Trump says, corrupt Joe. And one thing that Donald Trump has taught the Republicans that they will forget is to take the gloves off. But again, just like Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant, there is only one. As much as I'd like to emulate Michael Jordan on the basketball hoops, it wouldn't work for me. If As much as politicians would like to emulate Donald Trump's success, it wouldn't work for them. He is the unicorn. And now people are piling on Donald Trump. Of course they are, because he had a great run. It was He was getting too close. We got to take him out. And by the way, Blair, I'm sorry I didn't get to you. I didn't see you on the screen. My apologies. Always want to take calls because it's about you. But I'm, I'm thinking about this. And, you know, maybe it's your birthday. Maybe it's your anniversary. Maybe it's a lot of things. And you get slighted. I remember it's a famous, it's actually really funny, uh, famous co-workers, and not really famous, they work in radio, right? They work in radio in this market, it's not that they're whatever, except the delusional ones. However, I can remember I was the only person that didn't get invited to such and such's wedding, even such and such who hated people were, were invited, the people that he, he didn't like. And me, I'll tell you this, hey, man, I'm good. More time at home with my dogs, especially during football season. Every Saturday is, every Saturday is important. Got to have your priorities. Go to a wedding. Hey, man. And you go through the stage of the wedding. <laughs> then the people get divorced. And then they have the remarriages, the retreads, and everything else. And you're going, really, uh, couldn't I just send a card? But Joe Biden is getting the biggest slight of all time. They are done with him. Used and abused. More on that in a minute, but let's get to Lee Joe, who joins us now with Kevin Miller on KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning, Lee Joe. Good morning, sir. Um, we're talking about Kamala, her policy that she wants to roll out, this new price control thing. And, yeah, before that, though, uh, before that, before that, have you ever been uh, disrespected? I have always been disrespected, and probably rightfully so. Well, you seem, to, you seem to attract that and wallow in that. What, but my point being is they gave him Monday night. Now, again, you're going to go, what's the big deal? Obama, Clinton, and every, the closer you get to the nominee. And here's one. Why does it Joe introduce her? Because... They want nothing to do with that guy. He's the stinky, sniffing old guy, smelly old guy in the room. He got to go. We've got a new Joe yeah, Biden. Yeah. He's he's twenty years younger. His name's the Waltz. <laughs> yeah, and he but and he should and he's probably completely full of animosity as well. And so they're probably going to stick him on the so that whatever he says, it's just kind of uh, you know it's going to be a footnote below the footnote. Could when, you imagine if all of a sudden 
He's talking, and here comes the hook, like they did in vaudeville. That the, that is what he got with the Monday uh, time slot. That is the hook, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You, you can't, there's nobody's going to be paying attention, folks. And there he is, Monday. Uh, well, schmoody, uh, schmoody, uh, schmoody. Oh, okay. Uh, this is your interpretive uh, presidential speech. Anyway, uh, so you're so Kamala's doing this rent, this rent control or price control or you know or subsidies for new houses and all this kind of stuff. I just need to point out to dear leader Kamala and dear leader McLean, or at least to the people who listen to KIDO that dear leader McLean is already doing this stuff. She's already pushing the rent controls. And here's what I've got. I've uh, been talking to more developers and house builders lately. And this new Boise code basically dictates that the properties, the property you build has to have a condition on the deed. that says a certain amount of it is low income housing. Okay, so I've got a friend. He's trying to build a bunch of uh, a bunch of condos, basically five of them. He tried to go to the city with apartments at first. Back under the old code, they said no, they didn't. Long story short, he's going on two years now. They want to convert him over to the new code because he's grandfathered into the old code, but he has to cut the price of rent or cut the price of the houses based on this new city code and he's done with it. And so are many of the other builders who would otherwise have built something in Boise to help compete and bring the price of housing down. Now they're looking at it and saying it's impossible to build for a profit. I'm going to go to Nampa Meridian anywhere else. And so what does that do to the price of housing in Boise? It jacks it up again because no one is yeah. building in Boise. Let me let me let me jump in for two seconds here for two seconds, very two seconds. And when the developers acquiesce, it's not like twenty percent or thirty percent; it's like five percent affordable housing, and it's embarrassing. And she's embarrassing. And you know, I know that people want to be nice here, but she's embarrassing. The whole idea that uh, you know what does she, what what has she accomplished? What is she? She hasn't done anything. Tell, tell, can, can anybody, can any liberal listening right now tell Lee Joe or myself what, what she's done except uh, Joe Biden? She, she has advanced communism, and she's done a great job of doing it under the radar. Remember, she's, she gave a Facebook address on May 5th, May Day, the day of celebration for all communists, and wished everyone a happy May Day and called the Haymarket riots the Haymarket incident. She is a communist, literally and completely. And we sit here and we go, oh, no, she's such a nice lady. Her word salads actually mean something. This is not true. She is a dyed-in-the-wool communist, and no one is going to bring that out. So she's in for rent controls price fixing, changing the free market, interfering in the free market whenever she has the opportunity. That's what she's accomplished. She has forwarded communism in Boise as per her plan. And this it's amazing that we sit here and I live in Boise. You have the good fortune of living in Star. But I live in Boise and I watch this and I just... I'm amazed at all this sheep who will just go along with, oh, yeah, that's the, that's the right thing to do to, to introduce rent controls and price controls through this new code so that we can have affordable housing. And it does, once again, the exact opposite. It's the same thing Kamala wants to do. It's going to accomplish the exact opposite. People who do not understand economics end up with their Venezuelas. And if... Uh, if McLean had her way, we would be in Venezuela right now. You know, it just it's just by good fortune that she's the blue leader in a red state. So, um, Yeah, I hate to say this, but I miss old Dave Beter. Oh, my goodness. At least he 
had some idea of what free market economics was, and he did everything he could to interfere in it and give his buddies all the best deals. But um, he wasn't celebrating May Day, of all things. It, honestly, it's, it's abhorrent what what she does and who she is and and how she's pulled the wool over everyone's eyes because she's just this just this little you know nice looking gal that you know she says a few things that don't mean a flipping thing and then she gets into the city code and just uproots everything and and i have no idea who this new police chief is but 500 dollars says he's a dei um advocate and you know the next thing we're going to see is defund the police from the police chief you know what i mean so well she's, let's face it she's pushing that too let, 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 let's face it though we have a couple seconds here she gets away with things because the media here they're all in the tank nobody takes her on the embarrassment that was her first police chief she was never held accountable for it the people in Boise didn't hold her accountable for it during the election. The Boise Police Department suffered a lot of a lot of people leaving, still a lot of dissent there. And because she gave one-on-one -on -one interviews to the little kid, baby, inexperienced cub reporters that wouldn't know a fastball from a slow-pitched fastball, uh, it was all taken care of. Now, the big question here that no one in the state, and Lee Joe... You listen to other stations, you monitor the news, you're on the telegram. The idea that no Idahoan is qualified to be the chief in Boise, and no one's brought that up but old K. Millie, what the heck is going on here? I, I guess we're all a bunch of rubes, according to the mayor of Boise, because this is the second out-of-state person that she's hired to be the Boise police chief. It goes back to exactly what you said. Lapdog media in this town is horrible and equally gone as gone as communist the statesman openly communist channel seven has turned openly communist in a lot of what they do and it and it's just tolerated here and we're supposed to you know we're supposed to believe there's nobody here she the number of people that quit the boise police department during covid because she decided she was going to go um full authoritarian was huge and and then the number who didn't even didn't apply didn't want to go back she sat there with 30 open seats while the Ada county sheriff's office was doing just fine taking some of her uh ex-hires because people with common sense don't want to work for this woman and what we end up with in boise is going to be a bunch of order followers and that's what we have ended up with instead of People who are there to protect and to serve. We're gonna. We've got people who will. Oh, the mayor said this. She's made a declaration that the parks are closed. The mayor's made a declaration that whatever it might be, and they're just gonna march right along because that's what they were trained to do in in post, and they're gonna carry on as the mayor says. And she will be, become her own, or she has been, and she is still her own supreme dictator of the land. So. Um, so that's my and, and on, on that you. note, we'd like to say happy Friday. Yeah. Thank you, dear leader Kamala. Thank you, dear leader McLean. We appreciate your wonderful service to uh, your communist fathers, whoever they may be. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you, Lee Joe. More coming up next, Kevin Miller, KIDO Talk Radio. I was looking at the, the paper there, 40, 4,500 construction jobs going on with the new Micron facility. And it's great that the kids are going to be helped and, and it's all going to be wonderful. But in reality, the idea that Mayor McLean decided to thank Joe Biden yesterday, $15 billion, $15 billion to come here and, and gosh knows, do whatever Joe Biden is going to do with Joe Biden's money. Maybe Idaho will be the place that Joe Biden retires. Could could. Would we welcome Joe Biden here? We welcome just about everybody else. But this Micron facility, you're looking at 2,000 Micron jobs, 4,500 construction jobs, and 15,000 indirect jobs. I agree. This is great. This is fun. This is exciting. However, 
it was all done with funny money. Kind of like when you when you're when you first get a credit card or you get your HELOC loan. Hey, it's free money. And then eventually you got to pay for it. Now, look, anything to get Micron out of Taiwan because China is going after Taiwan is a good thing. But don't sit there and tell me it's it's raining when the, the droplets are yellow and say that I should uh, enjoy this, Mayor McLean. All these jobs coming in. And yesterday, she wanted to make sure that she thanked Joe Biden. That's not being nonpartisan. That's telling you exactly who, uh, again, as Lee Joe said, very nice lady. But she has an agenda. Now, you take a look at, at people. Our area is the most forgiving area in the world. That's why Idaho is officially the most boring state in America. We had it first, everybody. Whoopee. Breaking news. But you look at the situation of law enforcement in Boise. You look at during the pandemic where Mayor McLean met with Black Lives Matter and didn't meet with citizens. And Boise, unfortunately, has become a place that nobody wants to be if you're a Republican or a conservative. The liberals have uh, nefariously solidified their base. And you're conservative. We don't need your kind here. Then you have the fracturing within the Republican Party in Ada County as well. You know, um, and I get it. Not everybody can get along, unfortunately. You take a look at the gains that happened, and now, uh, you know, Boise uh, has the blue wall. And could we see, let, let's just say, for instance, just for giggles, everybody, because it is a fun-loving Friday. Not a free-for-all Friday or an open phones Friday, but a fun-loving Friday. Always have to be careful with that enunciation around the F word, if you know what I mean. Maybe you don't because you don't swear off the air, but I do. When no one's around, I swear to myself. It's very exciting. But at 580-5436-580-KIDO, Kamala gets in. And I always thought that Dave Beter missed his opportunity uh, in 2018, that he missed his window. Of course, it was a Trump time, so maybe that wouldn't have happened, but I always thought that the you know multi-term Boise mayor missed his window to make the run. And could Boise have elected a governor? Boise and, I don't know, Sun Valley have elected a governor. Most likely not. But it would have been a lot closer. I mean, Keith Allred, I'm trying to think of the Democrats that have run. Did The, De- the Democrats didn't even run anybody last time. They did, but they didn't, but he was really a Republican. And on one hand, you could say that's how dominated the Republican Party is. But on the other hand... When Merrick Garland comes to town, you know, I know press said Eric Holder came to town years ago. Are we going to get Kamala coming to town? Oh, look at quaint Idaho. Ha, 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 ha. Cackle, cackle. If she's elected. You know, you take a look at the, the West, the Great West. Utah, they can't figure out what they are. Wyoming, more rocks than people. God bless them. Montana, they're spending 20, 30, 50, over $100 million on one Senate seat. Idaho, it's so red, the libs have written us off, much like they did other states like Colorado. Now, you know, we're surrounded. We've got California. We've got Washington. We've got Oregon. We have a lot of people moving into this state that are sick of the the libs, and yet you have the bastion of Boise. Could you see her making the run for the big chair? If she does, you heard it here first. Kevin Mill in the morning reminding you, don't forget our friends at Beacon Plumbing. They say stop freaking call Beacon today for all of your plumbing emergencies. Or if you want to be proactive, call Beacon Plumbing today to get on the list. Like I said, they man that hotline, rain, sleet, snow, and most importantly, during the holidays and the weekends, stop freaking, call Beacon, beaconplumbing.net. They've worked for me, and they will work for you. Let's get you to work. And talking a lot about local issues lately, and, you know, when we take a look at the, the layoffs that are going on and the economic uncertainty, the inflation, the Democratic convention coming up, and it's funny that all politics are really relatable to life. You know, life imitating art, life imitating the politics. 
and I still can't get over it. And maybe it's it's not a, a needle mover, but you you throw a giant party. And, and remember, politicians are not normal people. Sure, some of them we like. Some of them are, are cool. Some of them we don't like. But could you imagine, you know, your 50th high school reunion, your 40th, your 20th, your 10th, and you're going to be the the speaker. Or it's like in your wedding when the, the best man, I guess like the maid of honor makes a speech now. Why? Can't the guy have anything? And the guy tries to make a speech and he thinks he's funny, but he isn't. It's really the career of Joe Biden. Now, remember, Joe Biden has been involved in national politics longer than a lot of us have been alive. But think about this in perspective of your own life, your own career. You work hard since night. You've been working since 1986, maybe to be the president of the United States. You're not respected by your peers. You're not respected by the media. You you get blown up in 88 because you plagiarized. Never a good thing. Eh. Now with AI, everybody plagiarizes. And have you noticed now that the AI has the AI? So when the AI gets done checking your AI-aided work, that the AI says, hey, um, this was... 16, 20, 50% produced by AI. Eek. What will they think of next? And then you decide to run again. In 06, you got Hillary Clinton. You got this uh, new guy, Obama. And you call him clean. You call him unlike any presidential candidate, African-American, black American that has run before. And he's articulate and clean. And pfft, you're done. And then the guy, 20, 30 years, your junior, decides to hire you because you're not a threat. You're not competent. You are a DEI hire before there was a DEI hire because you're just an old white guy. And you sit there having to listen to people. And look, everybody knows this. How many people like meetings? Do you like meetings? Do you like going to meetings? And writing reports and then, you know, it's great if you have nothing else to do. You can always tell people that have nothing else to do in meetings because they're like, oh, yes, I'd like to hear more, sir. When other people go, this adds three hours to my day that I won't get back. That was Joe Biden. And remember, it was Joe Biden on Meet the Press that outed Barack Obama as a supporter of gay marriage before that. And, And again, he got into trouble for that because, you know, as Obama said, Never underestimate Joe's ability to F things up. 2015 comes around. Hello, Barack, I'm going to run. No, Joe, you're not running because you're an idiot. But I really think I can win. I'm the best. You know, I I did it. Shut up, Joe. Eat a grasshopper and have a good life. That's it. You're standing down. Hillary's our girl on her broomstick. Hillary loses. Joe thinks his career is done. He starts taking the money, allegedly, with Hunter, that we all know is true, allegedly. And they're raking in the money. 2020 comes around. He runs again. Dithering, blithering fool that he is. Doesn't really win anything. And it looks like Bernie Sanders is going to win. By the way, this is after being called a racist, not only by... Uh, then Senator Harris, but Senator Booker, the two black Americans on that were running at the time. They they basically called him out. Called him a racist. After all those years of service. So somehow he cuts a deal with Jim Clyburn, a guy out of South Carolina. He wins South Carolina. South Carolina, a very nice state. Never has South Carolina had any political significance since the Civil War when they declared war on the North. And you see how it worked out for the state of South Carolina, much like Bidenomics has worked out for us. So then Joe wins by hook, crook, fluke, whatever you want to call it. 
and he's in the White House. But Joe starts to lose the fastball. Never mind, we need the useful idiot. It's like working 30 years for your company and they give you a gift certificate or a, or $5 off your next purchase at Walmart or Winco. You don't even get a watch. And then the debate happens and everything. He loses it. You're done. You're out. Sayonara, Joe. And Joe Biden's a human. Now, he's not a human to his granddaughter that he doesn't acknowledge. And he's not a human to all the money that he ripped off of people or all the Justice Department investigations of Donald Trump and other Republicans. But he does have feelings. So he's so bad. Remember, three months ago, he was the best ever. Three months ago, Bidenomics was working. Hey, I'm with you, guys. And now it's done. And he gets the Monday night slot. That's what the worst slot ever. And you're going to go, Kevin Miller, I don't care. But I'm saying this says more about humanity and humans and everything is about affirmation and relationships. So you're telling me that the sitting president of the United States, and I believe that this is true, is less significant than Barack Obama, than Bill Clinton, than Hillary Clinton? There have to be fun times at the White House now going on there. Think about that if you're Joe Biden. 580-5436-580-KIDO. Let's go out to our friend Ron Grant. Paid for by Ron Grant, your safer money specialist. Who joins us now to talk about keeping your money safe. Ron, good morning. Good morning, young man. How are we doing today? Great. Ron, how do we keep our money safe? <laughs> You know, it's really not uh, really not brain surgery, Kevin. It's it's pretty simple. Uh, market goes up, we get a chance to go up with it. If the market drops, we don't lose. And every year there's a gain. We lock our gains in and go one way, and that's up. But the most important thing that I think I provide for myself and my clients is a lifetime income, like a pension, if you would, that you can't outlive. In fact, I provide for my clients and myself a lifetime of security through that lifetime of income, that traditional retirement plans or even money in the bank, uh, non-qualified money, you know, you want to make sure that you keep it 100% safe and, and have an income stream to live on for the rest of your retirement. That's important. Well, Ron, how can people get more information and hear if this program is good for them? Well, you know, right now there's a company, uh, one of the top companies out there is offering a program, a thank you bonus uh, through August 26th. It's a 47% bonus when you move your money over. And if you give me a call, 208-660-1372, we can go over that. And I can explain that to you. But I also have a great website that you can go on and check it out. It's safermoneyspecialist.com. There's some videos there. There's articles there that you can read. You can download a free book, uh, and then uh, we can help you that way. Well, Ron, we appreciate that. Anything else you'd like to share with us? No, just have a wonderful day. It should be a nice weekend, except tomorrow's supposed to be warm. But uh, you enjoy your weekend, and uh, everybody stay safe. Paid for by Ron Ron Grant, your safer money specialist. All right. Thank you, Ron. Phone numbers here, 580-5436-580-KIDO. I love this. New York Times doing a story about tattoos. Mike Weiss has at least 70 tattoos stretching from his shoulders to his ankles. Since getting his first in 2011, he has spent roughly $13,000 on them. Boy, talk about an investment. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And one congresswoman has revealed her very alluring belly tattoo. Not belly button tattoo, but it's everywhere. Why do people do that? Kevin Miller, KIDO Talk Radio app. Well, uh, for your entertainment purposes only, CNN had a big showdown yesterday with Nancy Mace, Congresswoman, and she got yelled at for mispronouncing Kamala's name, or is it Kamala? See, if I think of the old wrestler Kamala, then I can pronounce it. I know Calvin gets mad at me, but is it Kamala? Is it Kamala appropriate? Let's take a listen to this on KIDO Talk Radio, uh, brought to you by an old friend of mine, Eric Dyson, who, in fact, uh, he and I used to debate all the time. He moved on, went to USC, 
Uh, me, I moved on, and I'm talking to you. Let's take a listen to this and uh, the thought police. Well, hold on. Let me let me just finish. Trump is is being Trump is being undoing anything. Trump Trump is being undermined by Trumpian like politics in the sense that. The, you know, what she's done is I understand when I'm going to speak, I understand what I'm going to say. She's going to form her policies and she's going to articulate them. Now, whether we agree with them or not is another thing. The point is the strategy is not uh, a backfiring order. Number two, in terms of polls, the polls are a statistical dead heat. You say that means that she's losing. I'm saying for Donald Trump to have already been president once and coming back with the same reruns, uh, Donald Trump is in a very vulnerable well, talk position. Talk about rerun, Kamala's. Kamala's uh, oh, Kamala. you had it right. You, you almost got it. I will you say Kamala's did. name any way that I want to. No, but, Kamala's, but you mispronounced her and you also what, misjudged her. You're just kidding. I'm doing mispronouncing her name. That's why we're going to go to acknowledge her name. If I purposely mispronounced your name, that would not be a problem. Policies are Joe Biden's policies. She owns it. Normalizing that kind of viciousness, man. Thirty-three times. She was the vice president on Joe Biden's bill. We know that times the deciding vote on Joe Biden's bills. She has to own them because she was his vice president. However, so here you have Nancy Mace trying to make a point, and let's break this down because it's all become a racial game on these networks. You have. Let's see. We have three on three. We have three white people and three black people. And I guess that's just how it is. But Congresswoman Mace is a congresswoman. Professor Dyson is an activist, a best-selling author and all this. But why not let her speak the truth instead of going on and on about mispronouncing her name? Why not let her get her facts out that you can't say that you weren't a part of Bidenomics. Maybe it's like getting a divorce. Maybe Kamala and Joe are getting a divorce and Joe just doesn't know it yet. It's kind of like those separations, but one side says, I ain't coming back, little buddy. We all know that the vice president is not setting the policies. The president is. Her and that's why she, her vote that's set why Joe she should come out and tell the American the public what she thinks the about Senate. the issues. Because the American public is craving to know, is she going to pivot? Does she agree with what she said four years ago or not? Especially Which for people make who haven't made up their mind. Let me give you an who example. Hasn't... The American public is not craving. You know what the American public is craving? The end of these, the, the heat wave here in, in Idaho. Let's get you to work safely and on time on KIDO Talk Radio. Our great friend Robin Scott joining us. Good morning, Robin. Good morning, Kevin. KIDO Talk Radio traffic from the G&G Insulation Studio. Getting that build up before 8 o'clock on the eastbound freeway. A little crowding from before 10 mile through the Eagle Interchange. Uh, not seeing any real major delays. Don't have any crashes in your way to report. What if your bank account paid you? Get paid to bank when you open a new checking account at Horizon Credit Union. Put some extra cash in your pocket. Visit hzcu.org slash get paid to find out how. I'm I'm Robin Scott. That's your KIDO Talk Radio Traffic. No, thank you very much, Robin. Appreciate you filling in for Dave. You know what people are worried about? This coming to their neighborhood. In other words, Boise becoming Buffalo, New York. ICE arresting a Peruvian gang leader near Buffalo, New York, who was wanted in his home country for 23 murders. The leader of the Los Killers gang entered the U.S. illegally in Texas on May. The Los Killers Gang. And we just let him in. Come on in, Los. Come on in, Killers. What up, G? The land of milk and honey and freedom and everything else. You think the guys in Buffalo, as much as we love Buffalo and their delicious wings, were really ready for this clown? When he was arrested, then released with a notice to appear. He reportedly (laughs) fled. Hold on. He was arrested, and they gave him a detention slip. After killing a retired police officer, he was arrested alongside his girlfriend, who Peruvian authorities say plays a prominent role in his gang. Man, talk about taking your work home for you. I mean, bring your spouse to work day. Uh, that, that seems to be uh, the case. That's what people are concerned about, and the media is doing a grave disservice by attacking people, by attacking people who are trying to bring out factually 
these whole situations involving the Biden-Harris policies. And if you, I mean, we're getting to a point where you can't criticize the government because that makes everybody uncomfortable. You can't criticize, legitimately criticize the record of the Biden-Harris administration. This is fascinating. It's like TikTok has replaced books. One thing that uh, hasn't been replaced is Team Mazda's commitment to you. Yes Month continues at Team Mazda in the pre-owned superstore. Aaron and Joel are saying yes to more people like you, like me, who want to buy a car when other dealers have said no. So how can Team say yes to people with credit challenges? They work with a long list of auto lenders, and they're really good at matching customers with the right lender. Got a low credit score? They know which lender will say yes. Are you a first-time buyer without a co-signer? They know which lender will say Y-E-S. In other words, yes, yes, yes. Maybe you've had a bankruptcy. Mm. They know which lender will say yes. Don't be discouraged. Go to Team Mazda and let them get you to yes. Even if you've been approved somewhere else, check with Team because they might find you a lower rate with a lower payment. Sounds good to me. And late last week, Team lowered the payments on more Mazda leases so you could choose from a Mazda CX-30 small SUV or a Mazda CX-50 midsize SUV and pay only $247 a month. Your choice of 49 Mazda CX-30s or Mazda CX-50s for lease payments starting at $247 a month. Team Mazda in the pre-owned superstore on the boulevard or online at GoTeamMazda.com. I made it through the spot, man, but all kidding aside, Aaron and Joel do a great job, and one of their best attributes is really getting that low credit credit rating for you, that credit payment. There we go. Beacon Pullman brings you Fox News. Good morning. 436-580-KIDO. Coming up on our friends Clay and Buck today. Uh, Sean Parnell uh, will join them, New York Times bestselling author and host of Battleground Live on their podcast network. Uh, we are chasing Sean. We have an insight on him. I guess we should get him on. And uh, Carol Mac- Markowitz, uh, she's a podcast host and New York Times columnist. She's been breaking all the uh, the stories involving um, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden and everybody else. Uh, phone numbers here, 580-5436-580-KIDO. Um, if you're just waking up, uh, some really, really interesting news coming out around the uh, nation, uh, especially those of you that are going back to school and we're going to air that report for you in a minute. But first, uh, 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 um, a really a choice of two Americans. Really a choice of two Americans. Uh, two Americas, that is. Here we have Senator Bob Casey, who is getting ready to uh, face another battle for his reelection. His dad was a pro-life Democrat. He, probably not so much, out of Pennsylvania. And have we ever, ever thought that this would happen in America? Well, it's, not, it's, it's really not at the grocery store level. This is at the corporate level, Willie. They've, they've been making record profits. We've never seen the kind of profits in corporate America the last couple of years. And, and w- when they're doing that, they're, they're bragging about increasing prices. So my point is that we should give uh, the federal government the power to investigate just, just run-of-the-mill price gouging. And- yeah, that sounds great. Let's get the government to investigate the price gouging. Let's get the government to investigate why the prices have gone up. Let's give them special powers. So if you're a Democrat or you're a corporatist, you got to be a big dope to vote for the Democrats. Although the Democrats are very good at the bait and switch. Remember Barack Obama, he was going to go after people and and in the end he was a big sellout to to big money interest. It really... You know, the idea of price gouging going on. Even CNN is talking about this. The, and we all know this at 580-5436. We talk about it here uh, on 107.5 FM, 580 AM, or the free KIDO Talk Radio app. But we talk about this all the time. It's a political ploy, price gouging. You know the reason why prices are going up. The things that we learned about her policy that she's going to roll out is um, a ban, support for a ban on price gouging. Mm-hmm. Now, I think reasonable people would ask, what 
does that mean? What, what does that really mean? And how is the government going to be involved in that? Here's Noah Rothman in the National Review. Um, he describes this policy as a rank pander to the economically illiterate and just <laughs> a rank pander to the economically illiterate. Despite the presence of many who fit that description in Congress, mm-hmm. who under- they understand that allowing the executive branch to functionally set prices is a brain dead idea that would only hurt consumers in the long run. I mean, is this just a ploy? Because it sounds kind of like it. You don't think it's just a ploy? Of course it's a ploy. They're throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. And of course, what sticks is they want people to say that the federal government will be will protect them. You know, the old nanny state. And if you're down with the nanny state, then you are down with this crew that wants to make sure that everyone and everyone is taken care of from cradle to grave. I love that article. We'll get to that in a minute. You have to be economically illiterate. But here you have Senator Casey advocating for this price controls price gouging we're going to do our very best to make sure that this doesn't happen are you kidding me and oh by the way kroger coming up with a a way to entice everyone to get the approval of their deal concerning the merger with albertson's in other words they're looking to bribe people we'll tell you about that coming up and like i said I don't know about that deal. I do know about that deal. I don't think it's a good deal for any of us. But at 580-5436, 580-KIDO, those of you that have been participating in sending your kids back to school, you've seen what's happened. The cost of school supplies have gone up again and again and again. Everything is going up. Are we going to go after uh, the Trapper Keeper? Are we going to go after Mead? Are we going to go after Dunder Mifflin and the paper companies? And everything else, because of price gouging, we're going to trust the federal government that has put us in this wreck of an economy. Oh, Kevin Miller, the the, the stock market is going up. It's great. It's wonderful. It's exciting. Is it really exciting when you go to the supermarket, when you go to buy your kids clothes, when you go, you know, here, there and everywhere? Are you excited? Do you have more disposable income now than you did four or five years ago? Remember when people were just printing money, literally. The government was giving money away to you, to me, to everyone else. At 580-5436-580-KIDO. And yet we are led to believe that everything is going to be great that everything is going to be wonderful and exciting because the government is going to fix it. The same government that has prosecuted Christians, the same government that has prosecuted pro-life people, the same government that has uh, put people in prison for speaking their minds. Let's go to let's go to the videotape. For parents, back to school means back to spending. Since 2016, average household spending on back to school has increased 30 percent, with families expected to shell out more than $870 in 2024. What are parents facing this year? Parents everywhere are certainly excited for their kids to go back to school, but the cost of all of those things you need to buy for your kids really adds up. Sure. Is this the excitement? Is this the the, the, the economy that you want? Because that's what the Democrats are selling. Price controls, vilifying corporations, and I'm not down with the corporations. But as we've learned throughout history, where, where has government been the solution to helping with the prices and the price controls? On the other hand, a guy that everybody's describing as weird has something very profound to say. And corporate America is not especially friendly to parents with young children, especially young moms with young children. And I think that we have to promote a culture of pro-family thinking and pro-family policy in this country where we see children as as, as blessings and as resources and not as curses, which is how I think way too many 
companies and frankly way too many uh, of our leaders in Washington think about our young children. So I, I would very much like for our young moms and our young dads to be able to have whatever family they want to have and for them to not feel like it's going to ruin their career or ruin their future, we should be encouraging young moms and dads to bring life into the world. And I think there are a whole host of ways in which we prevent them from doing it, and that's got to change. And they describe that guy as weird. When's the last time any politician has said that? When's the last time that anyone has had enough guts to say that? Why aren't we helping the family? Why aren't we doing our our very best to help average Americans, any Americans, all Americans, and not make the family a four-letter word? More on that in a minute, but let me tell you about our friends at Treasure Valley Subaru. Here's a very, very easy way to find a good quality used car for under $20,000 that are locally available today. Go to treasurevalleysubaru.com. That's treasurevalleysubaru.com and click on the priced under 20K drop down under pre owned vehicles. You'll find pre owned vehicles on the top menu bar. And when you place the cursor over it, the drop down appears with priced under 20K. Click it and you'll see the cars like these that I'm going to tell you about with Kevin Miller on KIDO Talk Radio. A 2017 Subaru Outback for $18,995. A 2015 Honda Accord for only eighteen nine ninety five, a 2017 Nissan Murano for only fourteen nine ninety five. The Idaho Center pre-owned superstore at Treasure Valley Subaru is where you'll find cars under twenty thousand and cars with payments of two fifty a month. And if you need help with financing, let Rob and his crew put their experience to work for you. For folks with credit challenges, getting a car loan is often as simple as finding a dealer who knows how to find the right lender for the situation. And look, there's no judging. I've done financing with those guys for years. They're very nice. You're not going to be embarrassed. They're going to work for you. Treasure Valley Subaru and the Idaho Center pre-owned Superstore together on one giant lot at the Idaho Center Auto Mall and at TreasureValleySubaru.com. Please tell them, tell Aaron and Joel that Kevin Miller sent you. I would appreciate that. And look, there's no, not a lot of high pressure there. You just go there, hang out, and again, they're doing their very best for you. Phone numbers here, 580-5436-580-KIDO. Uh, let's continue on here, but think about this. If you're going back to school, uh, what say you? Back to school means back to spending. Since 2016, average household spending on back to school has increased 30 percent, with families expected to shell out more than $870 in 2024. What are parents facing this year? Parents everywhere are certainly excited for their kids to go back to school, but the cost of all of those things you need to buy for your kids really adds up. Yes adding up again and again and again when will it stop hey by the way our boy cage clipper remember him from the daily caller if you missed his interview you can go to our podcast section and check that out uh the kamala harris campaign altered news headlines to make them appear more favorable if this doesn't meet the definition of misinformation nothing does but the democracy defenders in our corporate media hardly seem to care now, this is interesting because there is a, a local radio story on this, and I'll tell you about it in a minute. At, not here, but in the Dakotas. Axios broke the story earlier Tuesday that the Harris campaign sneakily sponsored Google search ads that led to news stories from nearly every major news outlet in the country, except they changed the headlines and subheaders to make the stories appear as ringing endorsements. By the way, you've got this radio station in... Fargo, North Dakota, and you ever, but I guess Liberal Steve's been to Fargo. So they, W D A Y, they're threatening to sue Harris because they're one of the people. Here's the other issue with that is I know Scott Hernan, he's been running that place for years, former talk show host, probably still a talk show host, but those people, they stand up for what's right, and Harris might have picked the wrong thing to do. And you're, again, an unforced error. If you're winning, which the media says they're winning and we're losing, why would you have to lie? 
unless, unless you're not really winning. Unless the secret polls reveal that Harris is in trouble, that thankfully Americans aren't as stupid as the major media outlets say that we are. For example, one ad linked the uh, in the article from The Guardian using the campaign's own headline, VP Harris fights abortion bans, Harris defends repo freedom. It then included a subheader, the subheader that read, Vice President Harris is a champion for reproductive freedom and will stop Trump's abortion bans. By the way, um, that's not an accurate headline. And think about this. The media outlets, they're not doing anything. Now, here you have it. They use the same trick with the independent NPR, the Associated Press, USA Today, everything else. It's the tip of the iceberg when you're thinking about this. And nobody's really doing anything about it. So essentially, they're making up the fake news and we're just going to sit there and take it. And millions, if not more millions of people are watching her on TikTok with her laugh and are going to vote for them. By the way, uh, Marine Bob says he was born in Fargo and that's where they have the Shields hardware store, which became Shields in Meridian and around the world. Thank you, Marine Bob, for that one. Phone numbers here, 580-5436-580-KIDO. But how in the world can you sit there and, you know, they're they're lying and they're getting caught and no one's doing anything about it? Kind of like what's going on in Boise. Let's go to the App Yap Club. Something is going on in Boise regarding the homeless, Kevin Miller. I don't think the, the growth is organic. Snitch McLean made it clear she would not enforce new laws, allowing breaking up camps. Did that send a signal? Are other cities bussing them here? I hear California started doing that. We have a number of streets with lines of immobile Winnebago's around downtown. State Street is going to be a real mess with when Interfaith Massive Center opens. Between line bikes everywhere and what I suspect are migrants that are also coming here, it's going to start causing issues at retail outlets. Shoplifting and emergency room access feels like what I left in Huntington Beach seven years ago. Just a worried citizen, Idaho strong. Burn out the day, burn out the night, but I will never give the devil his due. Saw Blue Oyster called in Maine, Maine Mans, Germany in the 80s. Thank you, Mike and Caldwell. And it goes on and on and on. So you can always join us if you're a member of the App Yap Club. We would love for you to be a part of the team. Joining us now, our man, David DeHaas, who's going to clean things out for you today today and Sunday at 9. Good morning, David. Good morning, Mr. Miller. How are you? How are you doing today? Well, kind of missed our little call last week. You know, once you get into a rhythm, it's didn't know what to do. Hopefully you didn't get stopped up. (laughs) Hey, you know, all this stuff about uh, the government's idea of using price controls is kind of like when you go to the doctor. Let's say you go to the doctor and you got some joint pain and you got some bloating and gas. And oh, by the way, you can't poop. The doctor says, well, I'm going to fix it. Either you poop or I'm going to start fining you $1,000 a day. And they send you home. That's how the government works. But living in waters, we don't work that way. We know how to fix those issues with using colon hydrotherapy to clean out all that junk in your trunk and take care of it and manage your bowels. You've got 36 feet of intestinal tract with surface areas of the size of a tennis court. That's a lot of area to be taken care of. That's where all your nutrients absorb. So how it lives as the second brain, which is what it's called, is how you live. If you've got joint pain, gas, bloating, brain fog, any of these issues, you've got to begin with cleaning up the gut first. So unlike the government, Kevin, I won't be finding people. We'll take good care of them down here. Well, we appreciate that. Um, what's going on on su- Sunday at noon or at 9? Yeah, Sunday at 9, a whole body detox show. Yep, we're, we have back. We had a – you know, you're not giving me enough time on the radio, I've found. I get these great guests on. We go for an hour and 20 minutes. Not enough time to get done in 40 minutes. But So we had uh, Dr. David Kennedy back on the show. Uh, this show, it took me years to figure out the role that mercury – the damage it was causing in my body, the pain eventually can cause Alzheimer's because mercury degenerates brain neuron tissue. 
So he found a solution that can help with pulling out mercury. And we get to that punchline this weekend on the show. So it's a continuation of last week's show. Some really great information. is It's worth a million dollars to listen to it for sure. Terry from State College, Pennsylvania, saying, this guy really knows his blank. I know my poop. Yes, I do. <laughs> I think he used another word for it. If people want to get a hold of you, David DeHaas, what can they do? Uh, the office phone call, 208-378-9911, 9 It's the right 911 to come to first because you don't want to have to call the real 911, right? And then our website, livingwatersclean.com, livingwatersclean.com. David DeHaas, we appreciate it. Thank you, sir. See you Sunday morning, sir. Paid for by Living Waters Wellness Center. Thank you very much, David DeHaas. Let's get back to the, the topics at hand, but when's the last time you heard a candidate say this? And corporate America is not especially friendly to parents with young children, especially young moms with young children. And I think that we have to promote a culture of pro-family thinking and pro-family policy in this country where we see children as natural as as blessings and as resources and not as curses which is how i think way too many companies and frankly way too many uh, of our leaders in washington think about our young children so I, I would very much like for our young moms and our young dads to be able to have whatever family they want to have and for them to not feel like it's going to ruin their career or ruin their future we should be encouraging young moms and dads to bring life into the world and I think there are a whole host of ways in which we prevent them from doing it and that's got to change uh, I think it's called perspective we'll talk about it next 580-5436-580-KIDO Kevin Miller on Idaho's talk station KIDO Talk Radio joyful to fight for your neighbors we know it is joyful to make sure everybody has access to health care we know it is joyful to want to live in a peaceful and equitable world so i am incredibly incredibly honored there we have it uh eon omer winning her re-election primary. Of course, then she goes on talking about Christian nationalists working to defeat Democrats in their primaries. Of course, she says that's dangerous territories. On with Joy Reid of MSNBC. Uh, the bottom line at 580-5436-580-KIDO, didn't she swear allegiance or say that she was going to represent the interest of Somalia, which I believe she's from? as opposed to America that has given her these opportunities? We did have two members of the squad, um, Representatives Bush and Bowman, lose their seats after APAC poured millions, I mean, nine million in one, eight million in the other. In your race, APAC didn't directly play, but there was a group called Zionist for Don Samuels that formed like a WhatsApp group to pour millions of dollars into your opponent's um, effort. What do you make of this ideological fight to sort of oust people who call for a ceasefire and that kind of thing happening in Democratic primaries? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 well, it's good to be with you, Joy. Um, I think the, the biggest uh, problem uh, with it and, and where it gets dangerous for, for Democrats uh, is this attempt to um, work with Republicans, uh, to work with uh, Christian nationalists, to um, defeat Democrats in, in their primaries. And I think that is a dangerous territory. Uh, it will disenfranchise Democratic voters and it will create uh, problems problems for all of us down the line so we have to resist uh i didn't know there were any christian nationalists um playing there weren't any christian nationalists playing in that race so if you are against eon omar and her pro hamas point of view then the the bottom line here at 580-5436-580-KIDO as you're a, a Christian nationalist. If you love Christ, are you a Christian nationalist? And again, we see these left-wing publications that continue to, to spew out this negativity, these lies, and everything else going unchallenged 
And I'm glad that the squad got that, knocked two members out. It's too bad Omar didn't get it because she, uh, again, one of the more uh, dangerous folks in Congress. How in the world can anyone in their right mind disagree with what Israel is trying to do to keep themselves safe? And yet here we have the vice president. I really don't know where the president is. I think they're going to stick him into a chamber and all of a sudden he's going to come back out and we'll see what happens. But on the other hand, at 580-5436, whatever happened to the Democratic Party? Whatever happened to the party of the working people of, of if your ally is attacked, that you defend them? Too many Americans can't afford the drugs they badly need for life and death. So they skip doses, cut pills in half, forego prescriptions entirely because the prescription of drugs are totally unaffordable. The woman I, you all met, the nurse you just met, she's paid $9,000, I mean, excuse me, $900 a month. Well, guess what, man? She's going to pay nowhere near that. $9,000, $9,000. She's going to pay, guess what? Beginning January, every single prescription drug she has, including, God forbid, if she needs a really expensive drug, like a cancer drug, maximum she ever has to pay is $2,000, period. He's still around. He's still there. Is anybody listening? Let's get you to work safely and on time. KIDO Talk Radio Traffic Talk Radio. Let's go to the phones. Eric in CUNA. Good morning, Eric. You're on KIDO Talk Radio. Hey, good morning. I really, really liked what you were saying earlier about this price gouging scam that they say, you know, they're the real price gougers. And uh, isn't it funny how they... Uh, Kamala, you know, she's shifting blame to the corporations. You know, the Democrats always do this. Grocery stores have a 1% to 2% profit margin. And she turns around and says, I'm going to lower the grocery prices. It's like, why do, they never addressed the problem that they created. They created those grocery prices. You know, and, and and the funny thing is, if you guys are going to make all your dictator promises, why didn't you guys do that three years ago? And it's funny, though, they create the problem. You know, they created all the prices going up by their overspending, by messing up our energy industry. They created the problem. Then they turn around and they they get the small minded people roused up by blaming corporations. Oh, it's these it's these grocery store corporations and they're price gouging. And I'm going to do something about that. Give me a break. Why don't why don't they address the real problem? They created it with their overspending, with the regulations, with everything they've done in the last three and a half years. They're the ones that have, are the price gougers. So I, I, it's funny how they just turn around and they act like dictators. You know what I mean? They 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 blame Christian nationalists. They blame corporations. They blame this and that. And we're gonna we're gonna act like dictators. And we're gonna tell these court corporations they have to lower their prices what a joke they're the ones that created the problem and then they turn around and they have these dictator promises they're gonna i'm gonna lower prescription drug costs it's like joe joe dingleberry why didn't you do that three years ago you know what i mean it's so stupid and you know somebody should remind kamala if she ever talks to the press and she has all these promises somebody should ask her well, if you're going to do all these amazing things, why didn't you do it a while back? And and they're not amazing things. They're not amazing things at all. They're just blaming corporations. They're blaming, blame, 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 and accuse, and then turn around with the dictator solution, and I'm going to tell them what to do. I'm going to have price controls. I'm going to do this and that, and I'm going to tell these greedy corporations what to do. Such a joke, isn't it? No, I, I agree with you and that the, the media continues to, to roll with this. And, you know, what what do you do? Well, we, we continue to try to get people to uh, to be awakened by listening to this program. Yep. I mean, that's all we can do, right? I mean, I think a lot of people just really don't understand what's going on and what's at stake. 
you know, she gets up there or whoever, these Democrats get up there and they cheer on some goofy idea and blame somebody. And then they got their dictator solution. It, it, it's ridiculous. And it, I just I just hope people wake up. And I really hope that Scamala or Kamala or Chameleon or whatever her name is. I don't even know. Well, what's the proper pr- pronunciation? You know, I, I agree. Is with it you. Kamala? Is it Kamala or Kamala? What is it? I don't know. I keep hearing everybody arguing about it like it means something. It doesn't really mean anything, but. <laughs> well, it, it, you know, and, and, and people sit there and get offended by that. Well, I'm offended by the high prices. I'm offended by, you know, what she's done to our economy. Yeah. I'm offended by what they've done the last three and a half years. It, you know what I mean? And it, and and they turn around and they act like they're the solution. And and oh, just give us one more time, and we're going to do all these amazing things right when Kamala gets in. And if you listen to it, just like you were saying, uh, her promises are basically dictator demands of corporations and stuff like that. It's like they never address the problem they created. I mean, it would be amazing if she got up there and said, okay, I'm going to open up drilling and fracking, and we're going to lower these prices for real. You know what I mean? We never, they never actually address the problem that they actually created. They just have these dictator promises to demand of corporations and pharmaceutical companies and stuff. Well, they're already in bed with those corporations and pharmaceutical companies. It's just a ruse. It really is. And, and they get people all wound up. And then they accuse, like, the food companies, and then everybody cheers it on. Yeah, you're going to tell them what to do. It, it's not, even if they did try to institute those price controls, it would just screw everything up even more. You know, I, I just – they never really address the problems that they actually created. They just come up with these dictator, idiotic slogans to get everybody cheering for them. And then when she gets in, oh, boy. I, I just pray to God she's not going to get in. I, I really hope that this momentum that the, the the media has been, you know, they've been spinning everybody's brain with her. And she hasn't even answered a question to reporters. But but the media, they're still propping her up. They love, they love Kamala. And I, I just, I, it's sad. It really is. And I, I really don't think she has as much momentum as what's being projected. And do we really trust these polls? I, I would agree, Eric. Thank you for the call. Let's go to Chandler in Boise with Kevin Miller on KIDO Talk Radio. Hello, Chandler. Hey, Kevin. Good morning. On, on a brighter morning. note, uh, on a brighter note, today's the first day of the Western Idaho Fair. Uh, What's that? So uh, the Western Idaho Fair at the Expo. Today's the first day. Well, congratulations. Uh, so I'm going to be there. The, uh, I'm going to be uh, working the uh, Ada County Republicans booth on behalf of, course, of the Hold on. 16. Of course you're going to be there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, the other thing I was going to say is I was up at the Capitol, and um, I saw the Free Palestine campout group, whatever. They look, they look kind of down, like they could use a break. Like maybe a day at the fair would be good for them. Um, you know, get them out there, get them some more foot traffic. Uh, maybe, you know, they, the, the Democrats would take them in. We could find out if the Democrats really do stand for free Palestine. So I was curious to know if KIDO actually has some tickets for the, for the fair that we could, that we could give to the free Palestinian uh, camp out people to get them to the fair. I don't know, just seeing if you do. Does, no, we don't have free, free tickets for anybody. Uh, okay, okay. This is not the, okay. the free station. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm, you know, hey, I mean, you do the Boise. You know what you win for free yeah, here? A whole it. box of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and a hearty handshake and a slap on the back and a satisfaction of a job well done. Right, yeah, or a kick in the fanny. <laughs> so, okay, well, that's all I got for you, Cap. Thanks. All right, thank you, Chandler. I think we kind of let him down there. Let's go to Pro Life, who joins us now. It's been a couple days on KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning, The Pro. Yeah, you know, uh, we're arguing with the Democrats over economic stuff, and uh, we shouldn't be doing that because there's more important things to argue about. You know, um, Kamala Harris and uh, Tim Walz, they're 
they're for the most extreme kind of things that you can think of. They're for murdering babies right up till birth in the birth canal, and if the baby even survives then, it's okay to let the baby die if it was intended to be murdered. And, uh, and therefore, allowing every kind of sexual perversion with government uh, promotion, uh, Tim Walls, you know, he, uh, in Minnesota, he's, uh, they have laws there that say that if you want a transgender and you want to get away from your parents, you can run to Minnesota and they'll protect you and uh, give you all the help you need. So it's a uh, transgender, I, they must have a bunch of medical facilities there that do that kind of thing. <clears throat> I think they call it the chop shop. Yeah, it is kind of a chop shop. But anyway, uh, and then um, <clears throat> they are just extreme, most extreme as you can get on all of those kind of issues. And what they're trying to do is bring down America <clears throat> if they can destroy the family and faith in God. And you'll notice that they will never hear, talk about faith in God at all. They're just uh, total outright uh, atheist kind of people. And uh, so I can't believe that um, we would be talking with them about economic stuff because there's a lot of stupid people in the United States and they think that uh, maybe there's something to uh, government controlling the economy. But the government shouldn't, of course. I mean, that's just all the market economy will take care of itself. And uh, smart people know that. So, but people know that, uh, you know, you can't be saying that boys can be in girls sports and things like that. Oh, and by the way, the Paralympics, uh, the disabled Olympics, they're having a, uh, a male run as a girl now. He's been um, said that he's, uh, he's married and has had a child but now he's he's uh gone to it. this guy's being a girl and he's going to run in some kind of a race he's blind and he beats all of the girls and so i, huh? I it's just it's just a so you're saying thing. a blind guy who was a girl but it's a guy a guy I, i'm confused what is he again well, well he has a poor vision but he has a he has a good boy's body and so he can run in, and then he says he's a girl, this this man. He's 50 years old, and now he's going to, uh, and the Paralympics, the, I guess is controlled by the International Olympic Committee, they're going to let him run against the girls. And he, he has been running against the boys in the uh, Paralympics, and he, he wins there. Now he's going to come in over to the girls' side. I mean, it's just the most, how can you trust any of these governmental organizations and big organizations they're all uh sold out to the uh, the woke situation it's just terrible so we're gonna have to fight back just uh, create our own i guess uh athletic leagues whatever kind of stuff and uh promote those kind of things we ought to do that with rodeos why well, have uh you know we need a, a straight heterosexual rodeo and promote that well, isn't that what the rodeo is? Yeah, you'd think, but uh, I guess you. Uh, I guess if you go there as, say, a transgender, they're not going to say you're not uh, appropriately dressed when you might go there, kind of showing your skin and stuff, just so to, you know, to be a an outrageous kind of. A I don't person. really ever. I don't really think I've ever seen a anything like that at the rodeo. Maybe. No, but, why are you giving people ideas? Yeah, that's what you're right. Why am I giving people ideas? Well, because if the person gets the idea and they go there, um, the people at the rodeo are not going to say anything to them. They're just going to play like, hey, you're just okay. There's nothing wrong with you. You know, that's what we're spo all supposed to do. We're supposed to just... Uh, well, what, 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 so in other words, pro-life, you want to bring back shame. Yeah, it's okay to shame people and tell them, listen, I'm going to shame you, but I love you. And I'm telling you that you're wrong. You can't be doing this kind of stuff. You know, you, nobody, we don't even say those kind of words anymore. We just say... I got to tell you, I miss it when people used to say fatty, fatty, fatty. <laughs> well, hey. Uh, yeah, to, yeah, you're a shamer. You You'd like to say that. You'd say, you, 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 you're yearning to go fatty, 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 fatty. <clears throat> well, 
I, what I'm yeah. saying is, if you eat the right kind of stuff, I left you speechless, didn't I? If, if you eat the right kind of stuff, you can't get fat. I really? really tell you, if you don't eat any refined sugars, any refined flours, and you eat organically, and uh, say you have uh, raw milk, all if you if you cook almost any fruits and vegetables, it destroys the food value. And so we're eating food that is just making us fat and it's not doing us any good. Oh, now you're going after the fatties. Yeah, why not? Um, we need Fair to enough. Get, we, thank we, you. Thank you, Pro-Life. We appreciate it. Kevin Miller, KIDO Talk Radio. KIDO, uh, appreciate Pro-Life uh, trying to bring shame back. And why not? Let's bring shame back and everything else. One thing that uh, has been... I guess you'd say an underground cult-like thing would be tattoos. Now tattoos have gone mainstream, and it seems that more people have tats than uh, that don't have tats. Uh, was it Congressman Brobert, uh, Lauren Bo- Bobert? Thank you, Sweet William, uh, out of Colorado, who very cosmetically appealing, semi young mom got in a little trouble, getting a divorce, will be going back to Congress. She loves the tat. She's got a huge tattoo on her belly, and it's so big and so, I guess, alluring, for lack of a better term, that you have people that are, you know, it's on one of the the, the links to Drudge. Check out her tattoo. And so I'm looking at her tattoo, and then I, I take a look at the price of getting ink. Do you ever wonder how much it costs to get tattoos? Uh, the headline from the New York Times, whether it's the expense of getting tattooed or the cost of having one removed, Americans are paying for their ink. I always thought I could do that tattoo stuff. I'd have to learn how to draw. But you never see a tattoo artist that doesn't have tattoos. This guy here, Mike Weiss, has at least 70 tattoos stretching from his shoulders to his ankles since getting his first in 2011. How much do you think that's cost him? 70 tattoos. $13,000. $13,000. And they break it down like the ones on his belly cost 500 And again, I'm not attacking people with tattoos. I'm just trying to figure this out. Maybe it's therapeutic. Maybe we all go through the pain or, or something in our lives. And what we want to do is, you know, we suffer for the ink. I don't know. I'd love to hear from you. But here's a quote from Mr. Weiss. Quote, it felt like I was getting stabbed. It was painful because I put it in a painful spot. Another one, my friend died and I got my first tattoo. I've added to it since. And you have people with the tattoos up and down their arms. Now, he's a fitness instructor, but in the old days... And I love this. Once considered countercultural, something for sailors and misfits, tattoos are naturally are naturally culturally ubiquitous. Means they're everywhere. How many Americans have tattoos, true believer? One half, one fourth, one tenth. Can you guess? Nearly one third of American adults have at least one, according to a latest survey. And look, people more and more love the tattoos. It's a $2.2 billion industry. And if you're trying to hire people, chances are they're going to have tattoos. Tattoos have gone mainstream. In fact, $4 billion is the projection of tattooing by the year 2032. Right now, it's only $2.2 billion. Only $2.2. How many tattoo parlors across the country? Over 20 thousand and i i guess that's the renegade lifestyle if you want to to live that way let's see kent goldthorpe saying tattoos quote the best way to ruin the looks of a beautiful woman take your word for it kent more coming up as we roll along appreciate kent and all the contributors here on kido talk radio are you down with the tats let's find out next don't forget our friends at beacon plumbing good morning Thank you all for being here. Breaking down the big stories that impact you day in and day out, we will uh, look forward to 
taking more of your phone calls here. We'll also talk about Kroger planning to give folks a $1 billion price cut if the Albertsons merger goes through. It's worth $25 billion. And because you've had critics like Kevin Miller and others jump into the fray, all of a sudden, we're looking at mm, maybe this merger won't go through. And uh, also, by the way, uh, we're taking a look at tattoos. I know that's kind of a weird topic, especially for us. But this article in the New York Times actually breaking down this one lady. She spent about $25,000 and is just covered in tattoos. And those of you probably over 40 or over 45 remember when tattoos were, you know, the renegades. The tattoos were people that were rebels. And now a third of Americans are down with the tattoos, which is utterly amazing. Turning heads and, you know, what's next? A presidential candidate with tattoos. One lady here saying, quote, I started on my arm in 2007 and the prices were way cheaper. Today it would be three times that. And she had like the ocean on her arm and cost her $5,000. Well, if you've got five grand to, to spend on tattoos, you're doing better than the rest of us. Let's go to Jeff Manasso, who joins us on Fox News Radio, getting ready for, uh, well, the big one coming up this or next week. Uh, with the Democratic uh, Convention. Jeff, good to have you with us. Good morning, my friend. Yes, yeah, so the finishing touches are underway here in Chicago, both inside the United Center as well as outside, ahead of the DNC, where Kamala Harris and Tim Wall is going to accept the Democratic presidential and vice presidential nomination. So the program and the details, as we've, we've spoken about, um, not fully known yet. Uh, we know that President Biden, former Presidents Clinton and Obama, will will uh, they're slated to speak. Others, you know, we've we've uh, w we've heard rumblings about, but nothing we can report on. Of course, they keep things close to the vest as they always do. Uh, they did it for the RNC as well. You got to keep that star power, uh, you, you know, uh, as shining as you can. Because you know, if if we know that certain people are going to show up, then then it. it, it it, it, it's not as much, uh, maybe it doesn't have as much impact. So I think they're hoping for a big impact. And of course, things are always fluid and things change and they could add speakers to the last minute. So uh, we will wait and see. Yeah, I, 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 you know, it's turning into an all Midwest primary season. I don't know if that's ever happened before. What do you mean? Well, we're looking at the conventions, Milwaukee and uh, Chicago. So, you know, battleground states, it's going to come down. That's why we see J.D. Vance's campaign plane, uh, you know, basically parked uh, in the Rust Belt and in the Midwest. It's going to come down to Wisconsin. It's going to come down to Michigan and, and Pennsylvania. And, and, and that's why uh, not only are Republicans, but Democrats are targeting the, the working man and woman, uh, particularly in the Midwest. And so. Yeah, it's 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 there. There's there's a reason why why there's a focus on on these states. Uh, clearly, Illinois is 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 going uh, blue for the election, but uh, you know, Wisconsin was won the last two elections by you know about twenty thousand votes, and it was very close uh, in Michigan, uh, and, and Pennsylvania could be close too. You know, the the polls keep going back and forth. Uh, in these states on, on who's going to lead. And so this election very well could come down to these states. So that's why. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's also going to come down to policy. And, you know, days before the convention, and Harris has yet to release her policy platform, she also hasn't sat down for reporters' questions, so things could change. Um, but, but we're expecting to hear from her today on the economy, announcing some policies that, that she'd like to put in place on, on day one. She's uh, set to announce uh, the first ever federal price gouging ban. Uh, not clear how she would do that. Uh, we'll wait and see. Uh, she'll call for you know new housing to be built uh, to, to stock up the dwindling housing stock uh, supply in, in this country, a $25,000 down payment for first-time home buyers, other tax breaks, and incentives. Uh, and then she'll work to keep inflation that has soared the last three and a half years in check. So we'll see if she takes any questions while doing that. And 
you know, polls, they, they, I don't know if you believe polls, many people don't, uh, they get it wrong all the time, but polls do show that voters trust Republicans more than they do Democrats on the economy and, and immigration. Two of the most important issues that voters face headed into November 5th. And some of the issues that protesters will also be taking as close as they can to the United Center, um, where security is tight. So Secret Service sweeps going to be happening this weekend. Uh, the big fences, bollard fencing that's going up, the, the, uh, the, the concrete barriers, um, and road closures. So that's going to be happening in the next day or two. Uh, and, you know, we've heard from police. We've heard from Secret Service saying no credible threats that uh, this is going to be safe. We've heard from a, a big protest group in Chicago yesterday. Um, that says that the, the city has uh, steamrolled them in terms of their requests for uh, space to protest, for, uh, you know, granting them permits to, you know, get a stage, to, you know, have audio in terms of speakers and things like that. And so they're going to do it anyway. Um, they used terms like, um, you know, Killer Kamala and Genocide Joe. These are the, these are the groups behind the, uh, the anti-Israel protests that are expected in big numbers in in. Uh, in Chicago for the DNC. So uh, we'll see. We've told you that in Milwaukee, the protests fizzled out basically on the first day. I'm not sure the same is going to be in Chicago. This is the party in power currently. Uh, but uh, some interesting news this morning, Kevin. Uh, we're, we're hearing that a detachment of law enforcement lined up to assist CPD, Chicago police, from nearby suburbs and, you know, from, from out of state for the DNC, uh, that they're now reluctant to come to Chicago after embattled Mayor Brandon Johnson refused to sign off on uh, authorizing, granting them police powers, uh, granting the, the 375-man contingent of visiting police officers police powers to work in the city. Um, and what that would mean, I guess, is that dignitaries staying downtown, they're going to have a problem. DNC will not have adequate security uh, for the duration of the convention to be able to keep them safe. So we'll see. I think the DNC is probably going to be in touch with Brandon Johnson if they already haven't, telling him to do so. But, um, yeah, it could be a problem. And then also for protests. Yeah, no, I, I, I misspoke there. I meant the, where we have, uh, you know, dueling conventions in the Midwest. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of the last time that happened. You know, that's a good usually question. it's you know um, yeah usually it's you know in other parts of the country that's you as a, a a son of the Midwest I thought you'd like that one yeah I know it's it's you know there's a lot of attention on on the Midwest and look it's 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 huge economic impact for for these these cities and surrounding areas I mean Milwaukee and, and Chicago you know you're talking about less than two hours between both cities and so huge economic impact for for the region and that's a great thing but uh, really. You know, politicians are here for a reason, not because they love Chicago or Milwaukee. It's because these are the areas uh, that, you know, represent the, the working man, that represent battleground states that are going to be razor thin uh, uh, during the election. And, um, you know, so that that matters. Jeff Manasso, we always appreciate you, brother. Get ready for a big week. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, my friend. Have a great weekend. Our great friend, Jeff Manasso, Kevin Miller, KIDO Talk Radio. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Go ahead, please. Um, yeah, I got something to tell you. You know, this border situation, we had such a great border czar, by the way. She did her job fantastic. <laughs> you know, I've been working for a company for 20-plus years, and four months ago they laid me off because of an illegal because he's cheaper. I know he's illegal because I looked at his papers, and they're all fake. You can buy them online. Um, you know that's why. You know I'm I'm a Trump voter. I I voted him for the first, you know, the first time, the second time, and I will vote for him again because he's going to close our border. You know, I, I mean they dropped off three busloads at night in Boise about four or five months ago. Of illegals. It's got to stop. You know, I'm going to lose my house, and you know, and um, it's just, it's just 
very difficult. You know, I've got three grandkids that I take care of and a daughter. and It's just hard. I'm sorry. Uh, are you going to get another job, or what's what's happening with that? Oh, yeah, I've been trying. You know, I'm, there's no construction jobs here. Um, that's what I was doing, uh, running jobs, and uh, they're all just looking. There isn't any construction jobs, and the ones that I've called, they're just looking for younger people. Well, how old are you? Even though I have the, exper- even though I have the experience and everything and the knowledge and all that, they just want these young kids. Well, how old are you? 65. Oh, you're in the prime of your life. I know I am. I feel that way. But they well, don't What kind of jobs have way. you done? Oh, mostly big commercials, apartments in four different states. Well, do you want to leave your number with us? And if somebody's interested, they'll we'll give it, pass it on. I can do that. And if you can tell Mr. Hannity to maybe get a word to uh, Mr. Trump, he can, you know, probably use this story. All right, Mike, hang on. If anybody wants to hire Mike, give us a call and we'll give you Mike's number. Mike, a uh, hardworking guy in construction. And um, <clears throat> it's real. It is real. And... You know, like I said, the only person that covered that story that was neither confirmed nor denied was us. Who's really looking out for you, Mike? Sorry about losing your job. Hopefully somebody in the construction business would like to hire somebody with with Mike's experience. Phone number's here, 580-5436, 580-KIDO. Kevin Miller in the morning, KIDO Talk Radio couple of things going on throughout the nation, throughout the area that we've been talking about. Uh, earlier, we were talking about uh, this whole issue involving uh, tattoos. It seems kind of juvenile now when you hear what Mike has just gone through, paying thousands of dollars for tattoos, still waiting for people to give us their tat story, if you will. And then people flipping out over the Democrats. They're saying, hey, uh, Bottom line is we're going to put price controls on things. Of course, doesn't that lead to a black market? Isn't doesn't isn't that what happened in the old Warsaw Pact, the old Soviet Union? You know what I mean? Isn't that the type of system that we destroyed when we took down the Soviet Union peacefully without firing a shot? Isn't that what we did? And now America seems to be going to that system where you have Democrats endorsing the idea of price controls. I, I don't really see how that would work. And what are they going to do, threaten people if all of a sudden they decide to raise prices in their own private business? Well, it's, not, it's, it's really not at the grocery store level. This is at the corporate level, Willie. They've, they've been making record profits. We've never seen the kind of profits in corporate America the last couple of years. And, and when they're doing that, they're, they're bragging about increasing prices. So my point is that we should give uh, the federal government the power to investigate just, just run-of-the-mill price gouging and, and you give, give the people an opportunity to, to fight back against them. As I said, if they're not engaged in corporate price gouging, they've got nothing to worry about. But th- this is long, I think, long overdue. People are tired of just accepting uh, higher prices. Now... Consumers obviously have a lot of power here, and because I've pointed it out for the better part of nine or ten months now, people are putting pressure, and some some of that public pressure is working on some of these big corporations. But look, they, they've had it they've had it pretty good. They, they've got they got the biggest tax cut imaginable, along with the billionaires. That's why they're attacking me in this campaign. They don't they they know I won't vote for their tax cuts, and they also know that I'm I'm not going to not going to give up on prosecuting this case on corporate price gouging, and people get it. That's Pennsylvania Senator Bob Casey. Seems to be tone deaf to what the average consumer is going on. You ever imagine what the the Democrats, if they ever followed through with what they would say? 
hmm. I, I really, you know, they promise everything and they're on TikTok and everything else, but they never really follow through with it. In fact, the crazy thing about this is I believe most of us would agree that things have gotten worse and yet people are still voting for Harris, allegedly. The pharmaceutical industry last year spent $400 million lobbying the Congress to stop this. $400 million. Worked pretty well. They didn't get one Republican voting for against them. They all voted for them. Republican allies stuck with them. And the ability of the federal government to negotiate lower drug prices was tried to be stopped. The common line, all of us in this room, we're going to keep standing up for Big Pharma. I fought too damn hard to yield now. What did he say? Obama? And the ability of the federal government to negotiate lower drug prices was tried to be stopped. The common line, all of us in this room, we're going to keep standing up for Big Pharma. I fought too damn hard to yield now. We're not backing down. And get this. You may have heard about the MAGA Republican Project 2025 plan. They want to repeal Medicare's power to negotiate drug prices. Let Big Pharma back to charge them whatever they want. Let me tell you what our Project 2025 is. Beat the hell out of them. The president for all Americans. Doug in Mountain Home with Kevin Miller on KIDO Talk Radio. Good morning, Doug. Good morning, Kevin. Hey, what was that you mentioned about Fargo, North Dakota? What are they going to sue about? Oh, there's a radio station there, WDAY, that is threatening to sue the Harris-Biden campaign or the Harris-Waltz campaign because they allegedly redid a headline showing that they endorsed them. So they're mad, along with other news groups, but the media outlets are not picking up the story. Imagine that. Yeah, I've been to Fargo. I was up there working around it. Um, What's it like? Know? What's that? What's it like? Oh, I didn't pay much attention to it. I mean, at the time, all that oil stuff going on. I mean, most of that stuff, and I'm not saying the people or the towns. It, when you get into them oil stuff like that, them booms, them towns get trashed, man, by by the, all the freaking – everything shows up there. You know what I'm saying, Kevin? And most of it shows up there. The workers and stuff are fine, most of them. But everything else shows up there. Prostitution, you name it, it shows up. Anyway – I was listening to, uh, I don't know, a long time ago, just this year or last year. This administration sent in the state of North Dakota, Kevin, and you can look it up, to three different cities. Fargo was one of them. They sent three different tribes of Muslims to that state, and they hate each other. Now, why do you think they did that? And when I mean... They sent thousands of them. I think the last I heard, Fargo, North Dakota, at the time when I heard it was like 60-some thousand of them, Kevin. They hate each other. And the reason they did it is when they want to throw in on a friggin' martial law thing and they get them guys to riot and then like what you're seeing in Europe, there you go. Yeah, it's just, and then you could go on and on and on, people. Wake up to these communists. Please wake up to them. That's exactly what they are. They're pushing communists. I mean, what do you think this price gouging thing is? I mean, that's called communism. They're going to set the price on everything of what can be sold and bought, period. Bye-bye capitalism. So, wake up. 
Kevin, did you catch any of that yesterday about the pipe bomb thing they found in the in the White House back in oh in the January sixth thing? No. Yeah, look that up. Remember what I said about during the January sixth insurrection, so called act. The reason that was going on was because of the oh damn it, Doug the. Um, the votes, the electoral college votes, they had two senators, and then this came out on a radio talk show host, a good one, and I'm not going to say the name for, anyway, um, two senators. One, I'm pretty sure, was Colorado, and one was out of either Oklahoma or Georgia, and they were not going to go with it because they knew that the colleagues, the that do all the electoral college votes in the states had lied, cheated, and swapped them around. And the Democrats knew the Republicans were finding out about it. So this came out, look it up, this pipe bomb thing got set out, and so-called nobody's seen it, blah, blah, this and that, where Harris was supposed to be. And then all of a sudden, people start coming into the White House. So... They went with that instead of the pipe bomb. They were going to call the mega people that put the pipe bomb in there. They got, just go look it up, Kevin. This is booming out yesterday, and it's, Lars Larson's talked about it. So get on there and look it up, folks. These guys are communists. They can't win elections fair, and they're here, and they ain't going away. They ain't going away without – never mind. You know what I'm saying, Kevin. Keep up the good work. See you later. Thank you, Doug. Mark, hang on. You're next. Kevin Miller, KIDO Talk Radio. Back to you. We live to serve. We go to Mark, the watchdog of Eagle, Idaho. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, sir, this Friday morning. Um, You know, listening to Doug, he was uh, right on the money on what he said. You know, this bit with these high prices and inflation, did we have this under Obama? All right, excuse me. Did we have this under uh, Trump? No, we did not have this under Trump, did we? It wasn't until dumb and dumber who were fraudulently put into positions of power did this to us. Okay, so all you libtards out there listening, you know damn well who caused this. It's the ones that you fools vote for and keep voting for. They're wrecking the country. They're going to screw you in the end. You'll become a useful idiot in the long run also. And Doug mentioned about, and I sent this to you yesterday, Kevin. I said, I said damn about Gino. It came on the Gateway Pundit, and Breitbart showed the story about that J6 pipe bomb. There's a seven-minute video of the one I sent you yesterday, and, and it's even on the Breitbart one. I don't know if it's still on Breitbart. It probably is. I haven't looked at it today. But it shows a video where a local police uh, vehicle drives up and you see a guy in dress and uniform in a, take out a, a dark bag and place something out of it onto the ground by where this thing was found. Well, later you see apparently Secret Service and local police around there. And if you notice in the video, it states that they don't act alarmed at all. They, they were very blase about it. Like, OK, we know it's there because it was meant to be planted there. So, in other words, it, it, it's showing what the demon rat party is up to, how disgustingly pitiful and, and skanky they are. Uh, you know, it, 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 I, I don't know. I, I don't. Th- this is just the, the, the. If you look at what's going on, like Doug had commented about what's going on in in our country and things and and how we got to this point. It's been happening over decades, guys. It's been happening over decades. Now we have it where they're so blatantly, they've taken so much over like a cancer within our own government and the foundations of our country and it's in its constitutional principles, which they do not believe in. You now see woke policies showing up in the secret service, uh, you know, the, the IRS, FBI, CIA. I've sent you these articles, Kevin. Even the CIA, woke policies, Secret Service, we know all about that because of the dumb collect that was Cam, that woman. And then they stick another, like I said, useful idiot, which I knew they'd stick somebody in there with a cleaner record. And, 
which didn't have probably the baggage that that hen did. The one that was what for PepsiCo, uh, the Dorito, uh, you know, security advisor over Doritos and Coke or Pepsi products. So, I mean, they've infiltrated. This is not something that happened overnight. This has been a slow, and I would say this happened from about 1947 on. This has taken place in our country. And it really has accelerated from there all the way through the hippie movement, which is basically the communists themselves that helped to start that over here in the country back in the 60s. It's a divide and conquer mentality. Do you notice how we keep subsections of, like Doug was talking about the, um, what was it, the, the Afghanistans or whatever, these Middle Easterners uh, back in, what, Minnesota, Wisconsin or whatever, and how they hate each other? Do you notice how they keep finding ways to divide and divide and subdivide what they've already helped to divide in this country? That is how the handful control us, the masses of asses out there, who never pay attention enough to it. The people at KIDO on the Kevin Miller Show sure do. I sure do. Doug sure does. Uh, you know, your other listeners, Tea Party Bob, you, you get great people calling this show and, and share their their knowledge and what they see going on out there because they don't get it from the lamestream media outlets, even our local lamestream media outlets with their fake news and their propaganda. But God bless all of you out there for, for calling in and at least voicing here some a station and, and a man, Kevin Miller, KIDO, who allows us to do this. I don't know how long this will last before they shut places like the Gateway Pundit down because of all the stuff they're showing. By the way, there's one out there. An article just came out. I just sent it to you. In Alabama, did you see what's going on in Alabama? In, in no, I'm worried about them shutting I'm worried about them shutting me down, buddy. Oh yeah. No, uh, eventually I mean, I I can see that happening. You're you're about the only person that I can recall in decades, coming from the Bay Area, even when Michael Stabwich was on, he was he was local, he was national. I mean, but I mean, he eventually had to leave the airways. His lives got threatened. His families uh, got threatened. No, here it is. Alabama Secretary of, Secretary of State discovers thousands of illegals registered to vote in November's presidential election. That's on the Gateway Pundit. This stuff is coming out all the time now, every day. I try to send this to you. I, I, I know sometimes you just don't pick up on it because you're getting trillions of stuff emailed to you constantly, Kevin, and there's no way you can keep up with it all. But where is the Republican Party on, on going after these types of events happening? We know the illegals are being registered to vote. This is why we're hearing the BS that it's going to be such a close, late, you know, razor-thin race when it should not be. It should never be. Trump should be winning this by 60 to 40. That's I agree. Opinion. Mark, thank you for the call. We appreciate it. Let's go to Morpheus with Kevin Miller on KIDO Talk Radio. Hello, old friend. Hello, Morpheus. I'm hey, here. Morpheus. Oh, good. Welcome. Yeah. So imagine a, a pyramid. And imagine on that pyramid that you have people that are above other people. And they're making moves in this world. And so what, what we see happening, we, we see groups of people that are working, uh, that are moving, and we say that, that they're human rights. And um, the people that actually get these people to, to move and do things, they feed into their... You know, their greed, you know, we see raping, we see stealing, we see taking of property, okay? And so they're, they're, they're using those people in an upper part of the uh, pyramid, using people that don't know, to get what they want. So imagine a guy running for president who's mostly constitutional. And he's exciting the people to do things in a lawful manner and in a constitutional way. And why that's a problem for the existing power structure. Uh, you can look at what ISIS did. They allowed those people to go and rape and pillage the village and enrich themselves. Of course, they put, you know, the ISIS people put themselves at risk, their lives at risk. But they were rewarded for, you know, all kinds of greed, lust, and desire. 
Um, the people higher on the pyramid seem to give aid and comfort and reward to those people for doing the most evil things. And then you see it in our government. You know, there's aid, comfort, lack of prosecution from the people that sit above the people in our government that are, the you know, puppet masters. These people don't get prosecuted. They don't get held to account. And they can run wild with drunk on power and let their egos go and 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 uh fulfill any weird ideology they may have while they're sitting in government and power and that's the shoe that fits all feet Kevin. well look they're telling us what they're going to do and people are still voting for for it that you know it's the government we deserve apparently morpheus i i don't know i just think we're uh protesting the wrong people I think where, whenever you see a problem, you need to go two levels above and look at who's actually pushing for that policy, uh, who's funding it, right? In, in our own government, our politicians are doing weird things. The people that are in the bureaucracies are doing little things. Okay, so who's paying them? And so we're fighting in the streets like in England. They're fighting in the streets with the people, but those aren't the people that are causing the problem. They're, they were allowed to be placed there. And so why are the people fighting in the streets, you know, with other people? You know, of course, I think they need to protect themselves. Why aren't they two levels up on the pyramid? Why don't people look at the pyramid and say, well, why aren't we standing outside of Pfizer? Why aren't we standing outside of, uh, you know, the city of London and protesting? Those are the guys that are facilitating all of this and paying the politicians. I just think the focus is all wrong. Morpheus, appreciate the call. More coming up next. Can't wait to hear from you. Two lines open, 580-5436. 580-KIDO. Kevin Miller on Idaho's talk station, KIDO Talk Radio. Radio coming up, uh, Tall Boise Bill and Tea Party Bob. First, Ron Grant joins us now. Paid for by Ron Grant, your safer money specialist. Ron, uh, good to have you with us. Let's talk about how to keep our money safe. Yes, sir. It's good to be with you. Um, you know, my clients and I, we sleep at night, Kevin, knowing that we can't lose our principal and we can't lose any gains that we've already earned. And one thing you need to understand if you don't understand anything else is never risk your principal. It's too hard to make up. So my clients and I, we sleep at night knowing that we get a guaranteed lifetime income that we can't outlive. And that's important. When we pass away, of course, our beneficiaries will get the balance. One of the top insurance companies out there through August 26th are, is offering a, um, well, a thank you bonus for moving your money over with them. And it's 47% bonus. And that's pretty powerful. But more powerful than the bonus is that lifetime income. You know, the top 1% of our nation gets income from multiple sources. You know, why wouldn't you? Ron, if people want to get a hold of you, what can they do? Got a great educational website that they can go on 24-7. There's articles there that they can read, videos there that they can take a look at. They can even download the free book, 10 Things to Know About Retirement Income. They can email me from the site. It's safermoneyspecialist.com. Or let's have a phone conversation right here in the Treasure Valley, 208-660-1372. Ron, thank you very much. Thank you, buddy. Take care. Paid for it by Ron Grant, your safer money specialist. Let's go to Tall Boise Bill with Kevin Miller on KIDO Talk Radio. Kevin, I haven't uh, had the pleasure of talking to you for a while. I wanted to bring uh -huh. up a, uh, a topic that seems to have uh, gone astray. Nobody's talking about it anymore. Uh, what's happening with the illegals that are coming into the United States? Uh, and the reason this is important is they are coming into Boise. Uh, if you see a big white bus, unmarked, no lettering on it, windows are blacked out, but you can still see that every seat is taken. That's your illegals coming into Boise, and I saw one about five or six days ago again. I saw the first bus probably a couple years ago. Two of them were coming into Boise with a police escort. I called the police. I said, what's going on? These big white buses, no marking on them. And the lady said, uh, well, we don't know anything about it. So, really? Yeah, really, really. Big white bus, no marking, windows blacked out, but you can still see that every seat's taken. 
And you're saying uh, they're, it's driving around. They're driving around Boise. It. I saw it. I saw it right in our downtown area, and uh, it's the same bus that had legals. Same company, at least, that had illegals coming in. Uh, I first noticed it, as I said, about two or three, maybe years ago, with a police escort. Called the police, said, what's up? Said, well, we don't know anything about it. I wanted to bring up one more thing. Do I have time? Uh, sure. Uh, the phrase onward Christian soldiers still comes up in my mind. Onward Christian soldiers. Victor David Hansen said something that I think is important to realize when you talk about soldiers. Victor David Hansen said, you don't have a soldier until they learn to hate. I think our onward Christian soldiers is valid, and we need to learn to hate evil. That's my point. Fair enough. Appreciate that. Thank you very much for the call, Tall Boise Bill. Let's go to Tea Party Bob, the publisher of the Gem State Patriot. Hello, Tea Party Bob. Oh, hello, Mr. Miller. I've been waiting patiently to add my two cents. You know, it's interesting that the same government officials that caused our current inflation problem with huge spending policies are now telling us they can fix the problem with price controls. I've never heard anything so dumb in my life. You know, most of your listeners don't remember the last time we had price controls, but in 1971, Nixon showed us just how dangerous unchecked executive power can be to the free enterprise system. He ordered the freeze on all prices and wages throughout the United States. After a 90-day freeze, increases would have to be approved by a pay board and the price commission. This policy turned into a complete disaster as he put the economy into a permanent straitjacket. But just like today, the press hailed this as a great idea as markets rallied and even polling showed 75% of the people liked the idea. The economist Milton Friedman predicted that the people would eventually pay the price for this lame-brained idea. It wasn't long before ranchers stopped shipping their cattle to market, farmers drowned their chickens, and consumers emptied the shelves of the supermarkets. Once again, the phrase, we have met the enemy and it is us, fits perfectly. I remember price hikes from the 1973 oil or oil embargo made it politically difficult to unwind controls on gasoline, which led to gas lines into the late 1970s. The damage government could do if we gave them the power to impose wage and price controls would essentially destroy the free market economy and take years to repair. Ideas like these are the product of people who have little or no knowledge of economics or business. And that is the reason we have the current economic problems in our country. Do you really think the people who caused the problem in our economy could possibly know how to fix it? Wage and price controls are the policies that are used by communist countries like Russia and China, causing nothing but poverty and hardship, while Camilla and Walls have basically no business experience at all in the world. All they know is power and control so they can manipulate the people with the help of the liberal media. And history shows allowing government to set prices has always been a complete failure. And I assure you, if these two are elected to office, all but the elite in our country will suffer greatly. Trump and Vance are two successful businessmen. And if elected, have the ability to turn our country around. And Trump proved that he could raise all ships in an economic with his economic policies, while Biden and Kamala have proved that they can destroy an economy and I only hope that the voters can see the difference when they go to the polls. You want to know which corporations are making the big profits? Look no further than the technology companies. Guess who they support? Apple's profit margin, 26%. Kroger's margins, about 1.43%. And just a quick word about the Albertson merger with Kroger. This combination is only going to benefit the corporations and their stockholders as there will be less competition, and you and I will eventually see higher prices and less choice of products. That's about all I have to say. Boy, that was a lot in such a short time. Well, we tried to get it all in. It was a little difficult. But I'm telling you something. These two, they're going to party until this country goes under if they're elected. 
Well, again, I I can't see why they would, but you know, there's a lot of people that are all about uh, this abortion issue. You heard about that now they're going to put abortion on the ballot in Idaho. Uh, well, you know, Idaho, as I said a long time ago, like 15 years, basically libertarian and a lot easier to turn a state like this blue than it would be uh, a state like North Dakota. Uh, you've got people here who... I don't know whether they even understand what goes on, but take a look at what happened not too long ago. $93 million was just basically lost on a health data exchange. No one seems to know where the money went. That's got to tell you something about the government we have and the fact that 40% of our budget comes from the feds. Well, not only that, but, we, we, you know, you grew up in a, in America where people loved America, and now we have everybody who all they seemingly want to do is is tear it down. Well, you know, if they can't control it, they'd prefer to tear it down. If they can control it, then they want to tear it down, but only for their own purposes. So where's the win-win here? These, you know, I, you know, it's hard for me. I get so upset when I see this kind of thing happen, because I've seen it before. Um, economic policies can change a country dy- dramatically and dynamically. And that's what we've been seeing here for the past three and a half years. And you can't add 10 million people to a workforce and expect wages to go up. It's not going to happen. And the people on the lower end of the scale are the ones who are going to get the damage done to them. We're already seeing that happen. We appreciate that. Uh, anything else you'd like to share with us? Kevin, I hope you have a great day today. And thank you for your show. I appreciate it, and I'm sure most of the people here in Idaho appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you. It's a great appreciation society here today. <laughs> thank you, my friend. Have a wonderful day. All right. Thank you very much, our great friend Tea Party Bob. I want to thank everybody for listening to the program today. We're going to be off on Monday doing some personal businesses, and then no days off till after December 12th or 13th or something of that nature. God bless everybody. Keep the faith. K. Melly loves you.